Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome back to the broadcast booth here at the Gran Vera in Madrid. Henry Kilbane alongside Brian Colby Rast. Colby Covington has <laughs> stepped into right. his body. Uh, but yeah, good morning, boys and girls. Time for some four card action. Twice as many cards, twice as much fun, allegedly. But first, before jumping into the 25k PLO, we're going to recap the momentous day we had here yesterday at Madrid with the final table of nine set. Players took their seats to battle it out for Triton glory in the main event. So first, let's head on over to the coverage from yesterday. Sam Greenwood getting it in good, or as good as you can. Four to one favorite with the Kings. Hijack versus Button. Grim spot for Pake, right? Nine left. Yeah. 17 bigs, ICM considerations. No, I, th this was, I felt like this was a pretty standard hand. I mean, just the eight on the turn. Being not so standard and just super bad news to Greenwood, I mean, that card was uh, cost him a lot of money, yeah. right? Worth literal, so. literal thousands, hundreds of thousands in equity. But he did bow out, and then we had quite the lengthy eight-handed play. Nobody wanted to go home, and it wasn't until Big Al was chipped down to just well, he points. he had an interesting run because he started the final table lowest in chips and actually built it up to being one of the chip leaders. And then it stayed eight-handed so long, he ended up being the person who went out in eighth on this hand. It was pretty wild. Eight-handed play lasted. You can see the blinds all the way up to 150K. Yeah. If you went to the last pot, it was like 50 or 60K. I mean, they played eight-handed forever, and Big Al had a crazy ride. And yeah, Volkman, you can see here with just one big blind, that is courtesy of a huge flip that he got involved with, with Sam Grafton, who at this moment in time found himself as chip leader, tens against ace queen, left Volkman crippled and open with the final nail in the coffin in the form of ace queen. And, well, one of the brightest stars to ever come out of Brazil. Made a deep run here, but wasn't to be out in seventh for 440,000 euros. And then Patrick Antonis, who is at our final table today. Brian, back-to-back -back FTs. 13 bigs, button versus small. Sometimes you just have to leave it down to the poker gods, down to the RNG. A lot of potential straight cards, but the deuce isn't one of them, and now it's a seven only. And we're going to know how this goes because it's on the recap video. Sorry, Patrick. So Patrick earning himself 588,000 euros. I love that hoodie, by the way. We're going to have to try and snag one of those for us. Squiddy with a really grim spot here, by the way, Brian. So just open jams, button, courtesy of Ponikovs being on, I want to say, six big blinds in the big. And Orpen waking up in the small with the Rockets. I mean, paint me a picture, man, these guys, you know. Love that. Class act all around. Sam Grafton out in fifth. Wow, huge pot. I had left the booth by the time this happened because I did the first, like, three or four hours of the final table. Yeah, I mean, it's chip leader with but. seven left and lost a series of pots. Ponikovs against Hecklin. Ponikovs with the open jam, the 7-4 suited. Hecklin calling it off with queen nine and queen high flop. Even Ponikovs in dire straits and queen of clubs on the turn has the young Latvian drawing dead. First try in series for him, I mean, final table, fourth, 888 cam. Sure, we'll be seeing more of him at future Triton stops. I'd be curious to get your thoughts on this hand, Rast. Hecklin with the in-juice on the button. The three-bet squeeze from the ace five, standard all round, three-handed. Yeah, I mean, the blue blind's really big, right? 15 blinds? Yeah. I mean, my guess is you get to do that with ace five off. So um, you obviously don't want to be called by the induce type sizings, right? You're just hoping to take it down. But Looking yeah, for it seems like it's probably okay. 
the race falls in. Well, the stage was set was what we thought would be a lengthy, epic, heads-up battle as we came in 35 bigs effective. Open the side to limp on the button with Kings. Hecklin with the 4X goes for the limp jam. Hand number one of heads up play. And Hecklin just needed to fade two outs five times to become the Triton main event champion. And fade he did, Brian. Henrik Hecklin finds the hold with the Kings and takes down the Triton main event here, or the No Limit Hold and main event, I should say. And a here. snazzy watch, it looks like. Snazzy watch, bottle of champagne, and 2 million euros. Almost 2.5. Oh, uh, they made a deal. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, they, they made, made a deal. deal. He, he he walked away with two point one seven. Yeah, because they played for eighty k, right? Played that, for eighty yeah, k, and yeah. the watch, and the glory, and the champagne. You know, the night before um, the final table, uh, Hecklin and uh, Grafton came in when you know a uh, small group of us were having a beer in the little player mm. lounge over there, and. Um, you know, Sam Grafton stayed professional, didn't, but Mr. Henry Hecklin, he had uh, one or two beers, enjoyed, and he, uh, both of those guys were super calm, super composed, mm. didn't seem nervous at all, especially Hecklin, enjoyed one or two cold ones, and uh, just came back the next day, played really well. Um, you know, early on in the final table, when I was doing the commentary, I would say Hecklin didn't have, he had like the worst seat. Mm. Right, he had to open through a bunch of killers who were all looking to take spots. It, it even happened to him on one hand when he opened Ace Jack off, Grafton flats, Ponikov's three bets, Queen Deuce of Clubs ends up winning the pot, um, bluffing tens out on the turn. So you know he was real handcuffed, but he weathered the storm um, and looks like storm back late and uh, took it down. So you know, well played. Well, let's head on down and check out the interview with our champion, Henrik Hecklin and Ali Najat. People are said to be the happiest on earth, and I would imagine that's going to ring true right now as I'm standing by with the champion of event number nine, our 100K Euro No Limit Hold'em main event. Henrik Hecklin, congratulations to you. Your fourth cash, your second Triton title, and now $3.6 million in career earnings after having worked out a deal with Orban, roughly $2.1 million going to you. Obviously, you guys played for the title. Walk me through this final table. You had some friends here and Sam Grafton, some guys that you're familiar with from London, but it was very challenging, was it not? Yeah, it's, it's always fun to play with Sam. He's always uh, a, fun, a fun, fun guy to play with, and he, he brings a lot of energy to the table, and he... He talks a shit ton and he's too loud sometimes, but it's, it's all good. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a great table. Um, fun players as well to play with, and uh, yeah. Prior to your arrival here at the final table, how dark did it get? Were you down to sub 10 bigs? Were you all in for your tournament life on multiple occasions? I think I was down to 20 and I got in king-queen against ace-queen, and I managed to hit a king on the river, so that kind of spun me, spun me off a little bit, spun me up. Well, that's obviously allowed. Plenty of skill went into it sure. as well. I ask everybody this on the heels of winning a title. What is it about these Triton events, you're a veteran to them, that keeps you coming back? I think the, the main thing is that it's so well organized and the Triton people take, take such good care of all the players and make it, you, they make you want to come back, you know? So big kudos to the Triton people. Also this new app they've developed, which is you know revolution, revolutionary for, for live poker, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, all in all, great event and all this stuff, yeah. Any plans for tonight now with that extra 2.1 million euros sitting in your back pocket? Um, definitely have plans, but I don't know if it have been worth spending all that money, but no. <laughs> I'm definitely going to get a little bit drunk, I guess. <laughs> all right, congratulations. <laughs> have fun, my friend. Thank you, thank you. I feel like he may put us out of a job. You know, it's like a, a walking promo for future Triton events. <laughs> yeah. Like, great yeah. to see, though, like, you know, obviously... At the time, it was all business at the, the final table. And I, this is something I wanted to dive into with you a little bit because we've spoken about mindset before where you do have friends at the table, but at the end of the day, you're playing for over 2 million. And it almost felt like, 
a lot of weight was just off of his shoulders as soon as that final card rolled off and he had won the tournament because prior to that, there wasn't a single smile. It wasn't saying anything to anyone at the table unless they bust and, you know, it was like a handshake. But from your experience, Brian, like, is that, am I describing that well? Is it like a weight off your shoulders or is it just like the anxiety has finally disappeared once you get it done? Man, no, it, it, you're capturing something that I think is real. Right. This is a, I mean, a really good kind of colloquial way to put it would be game face. Mm. Okay. Uh, listen, when you go in and compete, you have to be not, you have to be focused. You have to be present. You have to be tr firing on all cylinders, paying attention, ready to make your best decisions. But also, I mean, you can't let other things distract you. Like he mentioned, he's friends with Sam Grafton. Yeah, exactly. In fact, they came in and the night before, you know, he had a drink, they were hanging out with us. So, but like when you're competing at the poker table, right? I mean, a, a real, you know, there's no friends at the poker table, no. right? It's just like, you know, if, if uh, analogy it could be two NBA players or, you know, football players or whatever, but when they're on the field, like they're competing for their team. Of course. Like when you're yeah. playing poker, you're just trying to make the best decision and win. It's not personal. It's business, right? You, you enjoy whatever with your friend afterwards if you happen to be playing with one of your friends. So you're, you've got onto something real. And the best way to say it is like, it's your game face at the poker table. You know, you're there to play, you're, you're there to win, and you're just trying to make the best decisions. And for a lot of people, Hen myself and Hecklin, that involves kind of, you know, kind of shutting it down and focusing. And so you're not going to see a lot of expression. And so that what you're seeing after it's done is that change. And now mm -hmm. he's about, okay, I'm going to enjoy the moment. Or yeah, like okay. when you bust, you're like, well, you know, what happened? And you're on, you're on your way out. But yeah. so, yeah, so that, that, that's a real thing. Well, talking of business more business to jump into here in Madrid. It's the final table of event number 11, the 25K Pot Limit Omaha with fan favorite Tom Dwan leading the pack. Patrick Antonius with back-to-back -back final tables. Gonna get the table up for you boys and girls on the app so we can take a quick glance. So we come in today. Wait, eight... let me say something about that real fast. I'm excited about that because I played with both these guys uh, on full tilt, and actually Phil Ivey almost made the final table. So he did. Um, this yeah. is like a harken back because both Phil, I'm uh, sorry, both Tom and Patrick, not Phil anymore. And look, you can see they're right next to each other at the table. I mean, that's back to the glory days of full tilt poker when they it, they were playing the 501k PLO game, and both those guys were two of the main players in the game at the time. So you know, I, I whatever. I just I actually played with them some back then in those games. So. Well, anyway, keep keep going. <laughs> Just wanted to point that out. Tom coming in with a chip lead, 81 big blinds, and then quite a significant drop-off to Ch Jeremy Asmus in second with 50 bigs. Jeremy, obviously on an absolute tear stateside, coming over to Europe, looking to get it done in the form of his first Triton series and first Triton trophy. But quite the table we have. Patrick Antonius, Philip Lovric, who... Jeremy Osmus, by the way, I believe he won a big PLO tournament in the WSOP last year. It was an interesting 50K? final table with like him, Negrano, and Helmuth were like the final three. Yeah, right? yeah. And uh, Osmus ended up taking down that bracelet. It was like the 50K PLO. So, it was. I mean, all three of the chip leaders, ton of PLO experience. And I, as I said with those two guys, like they've been playing together for who knows, like well over 10 years. Mm. So, Patrick and Tom. Tons of history as well. Anyways, please continue. <laughs> no worries, my man. Uh, Philip Lovric, arguably the... Well, I mean, yesterday, nobody really knows who this guy is, and he seemed to have all of the moves. 24 big blinds, so he's going to be relatively capped coming into this, but note the flag. The Swedish Armada couldn't find anything on Hendon Mob, couldn't find the screen name on any of the sites. This guy has literally never played a single Triton event, shows up for the 25k PLO, and it's just putting people in the blender left and right. So I want to see this guy double yeah. up to around 50 and see what he's capable of. Because I've got a funny feeling he's, he's the man behind a very strong screen name. But we'll find out. We're not going to speculate. Yeah. Um, but two people going home empty-handed here, Brian. Eight coming back, six getting paid. Min cash of just over or just under two and a half buy-ins in the form of 60,000. Champion going to be going home with 290,000. But quickly, your thoughts before we jump down to the final, uh, final table, this bubble play now. Everyone well, pretty capped. Yeah, clearly you can see there's four short stacks there. Uh, let's go back to 
back to the app real fast. We got Jeff, Tom Aska, Axel Bedell, Paul Foy, and Elton Sang. With Jeff, actually, our fellow commentator being the shortest. I mean, they're the most likely. Um, you got to remember, see, looking at these payouts, there is a pretty big jump to 60K, but every jump after that being somewhat significant. So there is value in getting chips now, It's not, and there's a big blind ante. So you can't just sit around and wait yeah. uh, too much. I, I, I would hope that the bubble play is not too tight here. I think that would be incorrect. So, you know, let's see what happens. Let's go down to the action. It looks like they're getting started. They are indeed. As we see, as Brian mentioned, Elton Sang, Tom Bedell, Paul Pua, and Jeff Gross all under 20 big blind mark which i see i mean i feel like this could go one of two ways we either burst the bubble in the next 15 minutes or we see everyone just kind of mimic everyone else's style of play and play really tight yeah i'll i'll take the over on 15 minutes that seems pretty fast <laughs> right i mean that that's you know, probably you know, less yeah. than 10 hands you know what i mean yeah <laughs> but yeah uh Wow, Osmus, aces under the gun. One suit. So this is a hand. This is a hand that could get Paul in trouble. I like that pass versus an under the gun open. I mean, I think if the positions were way different, he could maybe do something there. But I just think against under the gun open with all the rest of the field behind him, it's not the hand you want to stake your tournament. Onto right now with, you know, him being a short stack, trying to make the bubble, and kind of a dusty one here for Jeff. I think this is a good pass. Yeah. Oh, you bet. Always meant to remain impartial in the commentary booth but when you're out there or Please when Jeff out. is out there one of our own on the felt it's, it's tough not to you know send you guys some some good mojo from the broadcast booth you know yeah 100 percent i mean i mean you know Brian, there, there's a universe where you won the triton main right there is yeah it's not this one unfortunately but there's time it could be yeah, I, I was building up a stack. You were mate. At one point, I had a, I had a nice little comeback, came back, and there was like 20 left, and I, I got to enjoy. So I was down pretty short to like 15 blinds, won a, won a small pot or two, then I, I won a Bucks nice double. double with Queen Jack suited to Ace King off, and chipped up a little more. Then I had a break with 800K when average was like nine, like wow. I don't know, 940 or something, and there was. Paid 13, like 20, 21 left. Think that that was like the high water mark of the tournament. Sure enough, I came right back from that break and just bam, 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 three pots. I was gone. So I think we're going to see Dwan flat this one here. He's got a lot of chips. We're going to see Dwan be active. That's it's the way he plays. Paul, this was a very speculative open uh, under the gun. Ace King, good. Nine deuce. Mm, only one suit. Maybe ace, king, nine, deuce, double. I think we're going to see Jeff pass this. Jeff with the Roma top on. This is represent. this is a spot where you kind of don't want to get involved three-way. Good pass, Jeff. Soccer. I love love to see it. Oh, did you? I'm not, I'm not going to pretend to be 100% par par impartial like here. Jeff's one of my good friends. Really if I had a top 10 list, they he would make it. So I'm going to be pulling for sweating. my boy. That said, every morning, he's no longer in this pot. And this is a tricky like spot here for Paul. Here, you have to just like a group he found or All right. He's kind oh, of, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, sweet. Tom doesn't have a ton of equity to check back. So he could definitely just stab this, hoping Paul was he's giving up. I mean, Paul's so short. Getting All right, old. Tom. Tom's gonna wait. Yeah, you're 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 probably Ooh. one of the best player out there. One of the best, right? That was that was one of Tom's good cards. Good ten play. Paul does have the ace of hearts, but and he has a nine. 
Yeah, really grim spot. Don't want to start betting here in pool shoes. Yeah. Even though you have future nut blockers, just not deep enough. Yeah, I, I think this could be a card good enough for Tom to just pot it because he'd love to get Paul to fold. Um, and, you know, if Paul doesn't fold, um, he's got that wrap with the king jack 10 with the queen 9. So you can actually see Paul was a decent favorite. But but I do not blame him for check folding. It's actually kind of one of the problems with opening a hand as disconnected as that ace, king, nine, deuce there. So. Yeah, suits dominated. Don't really have much going for you in the form of straight draws. Yeah, I just think like eight handed under the gun's probably a little too early for that hand, uh, especially given Paul's going to be handcuffed if anyone calls him with his uh, chip stack, which kind of kind of was the case in that one. Maybe if he was super deep like Tom, on the turn especially, he could have, uh, I don't know, just like bet at the pot. If he gets raised, he folds. Then then go ahead and bluff Rivers on heart on a heart run out. Try to check down, maybe w uh, win with the nine. Fine, fine, yeah. You know, yeah. hit an ace or a king. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there's ways you could play that on the turn, but not when you're super short. See if Elton gets. Oh, Elton's gonna play there. this. I actually think he. I I, I kind of like limping. Yeah, I think limping off sub twenty is the most optimal play. Like, listen, this is a, a little risky on the bubble, but but Elton's a player who. He's also going to be thinking about winning this. He's not going to be super tight. And I, I think he's starting to get deep enough here. You can limp. You can call a raise. You can still play. He has a really pretty hand. I mean, a double-suited, one-gap wrap. So I, I like I like Elton's play here. You know. Wow, Osmus in the small with a somewhat legit hand. So one of the things Osmus is going to see here is Elton, who is the first limper, is pretty short. So he might be willing to pot and just get it in with Elton or or just not inflate the pot out of position, thinking Tom might not be very strong behind him. The flip side or counter argument to that is you do announce a strong range and Tom can still call. And then you now have the guy who can bust you. So I was curious to see what Osmus would do. And uh, I actually kind of like this play. Because um, it turned out probably would have just gone pot. And then both Elton and Tom call in position. And then uh, that can be an ugly spot. Dwan, middle pair, open ender. Backdoor diamonds, yeah. But I don't know if you're really going to want to bet at this. We'll see. It's a, it's, a, it's a hand that can check back, a hand that can bet. I think having a pair blocker in your hand is nice to go along with your straight draw. Blocking some of the obvious, you know, check jabs. Also, with an interesting one here. He's got the nut gutter, kings, and then ace of clubs blocker. So he definitely, yeah, definitely might continue. I, I think he might fold this without the ace of clubs. Right? Let's say it was just aces and kings, double suited, hearts and spades. I think he's out. But I think that club is going to give him enough reason to want to play this. I mean, he could easily have the club flush draw here. Yeah, that, that card's just going to end the action because Tom made the nuts and he's going to bet and Osmus does not have enough hand to continue. Osmus does block the nut straight heavily. The only issue on these two-tone boards, though, is, you know, when you start turning hands like this into a bluff where the nuts going to the river is going to change, what, 50% of the time a club or a diamond's going to roll off and you're kind of up shit's creek without a paddle, right? Oh uh, yeah, I think in order to do something with kings or queens would be even better than kings, I think. But For sure. Yeah. But um you would want at least a flush draw with it 
so that you know if you check raise you, you actually have a real kind of draw to improve it on a board as dynamic as this right so yeah because it's not i mean also board pairs right so between board pairs and flush it's probably over half the deck changes the nuts Managed to have a quick chat with Jeremy last night. He'll be heading home on Tuesday back to Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. Taking a week off before the World Series. I asked him, I was like, what is, what's a week off for you, Jeremy? Golf course, Solver Jail, mm. all that good stuff. And he's like, no. He's be chilling out with the family, spending some good quality time with his wife and kids before stepping into the arena. Oh, it's in Bally's now, right? Yeah, yeah, they moved the WSOP this year. Nice guy. Probably be a few growing pains, I would imagine, as well as, you know, <coughs> as somebody, maybe if you're staying at or very near Bally's, I'm sure this won't matter, but it'll be a lot more con inconvenient to drive there that's for sure there's just no way around that because bally's is on the strip as opposed to rio was like just off the strip so actually the driving in and out access was like nice and even on friday or saturday nights or when vegas was busy wasn't too much of a pain mm. but just imagine on a friday or saturday night driving in and out of bally's it's going to be a pain in the rear so yeah, i'm not like there's just almost no way that i'm going to like bally's more you know and ba i mean bally's also I mean, if you're looking at the nicest places in Vegas, you, you you know, maybe one or two of the places at City Center are like the Wynn or the Encore. You know, Bally's isn't those places either. So hmm. if it's just like a small upgrade and how nice it is for like way more inconvenient getting in and out, I'm probably a seller. But whatever, it's the WSOP. So I'm still going to be there. It's not like the, it's slightly more inconvenient to get in and out. So I'm not going to play the tournaments. <laughs> just, uh, yeah. <clears throat> a small annoyance a very first world problem to have obviously but you know is it 24 50 now yeah the wsp actually going to have a number uh one of the players the in the game was remarking this but it's going to have more like <laughs> high roller tournaments this year the 250 couple hundreds multiple 50ks in addition to 25ks and then all the 10ks so um <coughs> probably a a lot of the guys who are here oh. will end up being out there at some point, right, for for the big tournaments, even if they don't care as much. Mm. Don't think a ton of the players here care as much as, like, me or some others about the mix because uh, WSP obviously has all those mixed game, whether it's just, like, the straight stud high tournament uh, or, you know, actual someone, mixes have, of like, different Starbucks kinds. Yeah. Downstairs? Is it possible yeah, I was speaking to uh, Mikita Badziakowski and – just to reiterate what you're saying, he's just flying out for all the high rollers. Yeah. Same with Adama as well. It's like yeah, 25 Ks and above. Yeah. They're not they're not in the uh, the 1500 Raz streets, you know. But like, are you know? I mean, there's 10K Raz tournament, right? Oh, but yeah, they're they're not playing though. But in addition to the high rollers, I think oh, last oh. summer Carry Cats and the the Poker Go. I mean, they have like 10Ks every day it's or 15 Ks. I mean, the there's way. stuff for like no limit and PLO yeah. guys to play. You know, yeah. like if they don't want to kind of play the mixed game stuff at the WSOP. I'm, I'm actually super excited about, you know, for me personally, I love those. All right. Here we go, Elton. So this is an interesting thing. It's good for our friend Jeff. It seems like Paul especially this is really indifferent to the bubble. He's been playing a bunch of hands and... Playing this one on the dealer button. Probably going to get three-way pot here. Curious to see what Tom does. Tom decides Paul is short enough that he's going to just a attack both of these guys here. The pot in my doing. And we can see it's an uncomfortable spot for Elton. Like, oh, given that they're on the bubble. 
Tom might not have a hand that's super good, which is the case, but, you know, this double-suited tens, a little raggedy, going to be 50-50 or, or really flipping with a bunch of hands. Not a great spot when you're on the bubble, but, again, this is like... We've been playing for 10 days or something, and this is a 25K. Yeah. After, like, hundreds, and, you know, guys are... These guys have been playing cash, so guys are probably like winning or losing six, maybe even seven figures. So they're not that On concerned the trip so far. about like a twenty-five k <laughs> bubble right now, <laughs> which is good news for our friend Jeff, uh, who who probably out of the short stacks probably caring the most about about bubble making that sixty k. Been in the commentary booth. This is his first time hopping in. First Triton event. Oh, Elton's really considering this. Yeah. And he's considering, do I call or do I go all in or do I just let it go? I'm going to go with you. He went with uh, just let it go in the end. Let's get a quick a look one. at the uh, chip oh, count. So uh, Jeff on six, uh, Paul on seven, uh, Elton on 11, uh, Tom on 12, I mean... Huh? It's as grim as it can get. The problem is, is that I don't think Jeff is going to be able to just fold his way to like making any money. <laughs> Had a close spot there in the was it hijack with the queen ten nine eight single suited for six. I think if it's double, we just run it. Please hijack her. Mm. Yeah, you could just leave. I'll here, come. Here's oh, yeah, sure, a sure. hand. Fish. One here, and then one you can leave there. <laughs> Don't <laughs> think can be passed. Fidel. <laughs> what? Another one of the short stacks. Yeah, you can just leave it over there in case someone wants uh, it. Blinds someone just went up. 125k um, in orbit. Sure, I'll take anything. I'm a little bit more awake now, but. Put. Well, put we have down. more coffee if anyone wants. Oh, wow. Oh, for the old limp jam, is it? Oh, okay. Ah, Lovrick not going to get tricked, just limping behind. Yeah, you know, I think Bedell is short enough here that I, I kind of like just potting it more. Um, you, you don't really want to invite a bunch of people in, and I don't know that he's, like, so deep that I guess he kind of gets to limp mm. pot, but... He's, he's short enough that 175 is a significant part of his stack. And I just go to try to win the blinds. Or then if anyone calls you, you have just a basically a one SBR, right? So now we're going to see because I th I don't know if anyone's going to raise this UTG limp. And we'll see how Please it plays hold. out. <laughs> we can see it's not so likely people are going to flop a set. I mean, one ace, one jack is out. But I guess between 32 cards... There's only 20 remaining to deal. Five ways to a flop on an eight-handed final table, and good luck, aces. Yeah, good luck indeed. Well, currently the best hand. He does have that 7-5 working for him. And also, no one else has really flopped anything at all. I mean, there's not even a heart draw out there. Surprisingly enough. Now, Dwan. We're going to see Dwan be very active and creative. And I mean, will he take his bottom two? But he also has that gutter. He has a heart. No one bet at this in position, including a bunch of short stacks. The under the gun limp. Yeah. He's just going to like take a stab here and see what happens. You know, give himself 110k to win 300. Discomfort. I mean, this is a tough spot to continue with. I mean, yes, he has a 7 5, but it's a five way pot. So I mean, Tom has about, I mean, one of the weaker hands he would ever do this with. I mean, it's also possible he could do it with like hearts and no pair, but that hand's always bluffing the river if it doesn't improve if Tom continues, if Bedell continues. So I like Bedell's fold. 
Mm, it's a bird's hole. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> 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 five, seven. Uh, a pair of fives? Elfin no, just makes every hand so entertaining, man. You were behind. Only need one four. <laughs> I mean, Elton knew what was going on there. He could smell it. Well, yeah, yeah something was up. I mean, I was saying, as Tom, you know, <coughs> I think he's probably going to bet this. So Elton, Elton also knows. <laughs> Tom's got a lot of chips. So he's played a lot of poker with Tom. He knows Tom is very active. PLO. Tom's played a lot of PLO. And I forgot to tell yeah, you. Yeah, talking of those cash games you well. mentioned earlier on. Guarantee. Is this hand you have? Yeah, but uh, since we've been here, if someone do anything, I will go all in. But <laughs> tricky, tricky. <laughs> no, but how do you play at first position? No chips, no hard ways. They can go. <laughs> but now you know I only play aces, but I like the better position. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's smart. We are good friends, Tom. Don't forget. Oh, no. I play. I mainly play hold. Em. I don't play PLO much. Tom and Tom. <laughs> Tom with a nice little hand, hand here on the button to shoot like it up. Pretty much all private. I just kind of play tournaments for the last few years now. It's max pressure, pot sizing. Wow. Really and Tom Bedell with a nice mm, little hand in the big blind. I mean, Arya has a few though. So every series. Cool. Let's see what he's doing on the bubble because this hand is clearly good enough to defend. But will he be? Oh. Uh, he may have made yeah, an expression I, there, huh? Yeah, but, um, I think it's a fault. Yeah, so he's defending, and uh, you have Jeff on six. He's going to be in the big in two hands. He's going to have to put in a third of his stack. You have Paul on six as well. Um, oh, wow, and, and Tom is just going to go for this with a gutter and, and a decently high flush draw, and I don't think... Like Don't think Mr. Well. Bedell is going to be able to continue. You got the wife and kid out here? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Well, now we really have quite an interesting bubble on our hands, Brian, <laughs> because yeah, yeah. we have three stacks on six bigs. Yeah. If oh, Bedell sweet. folds here, which I assume what he will. Like three? Cool. That's and nice only six you, places get paid. Eight right. players Wait, left. Tom. And two clubs as well. Huh? Wow, that's sick. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty. You're gonna be around during the series. You're gonna play much? When you got that club with a chip leader, it's bye bye. <laughs> high low pot limit, high low. Oh, you like that game? Too? Yeah. Chip leader. Uh, nice like Tom and no absolute hands. cruise control here. Who? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's no just way. winning every That's pot. Wild. Yeah, two fifths of the chips here? in play. Oh, really? Thereabouts. He used to play a lot of tournaments. He's just kind of. He likes, he does. It. His two daughters are in high school, so. Oh, okay. Like this hard and he's really good. So. But yeah, I think you'll see him on the circuit every year, like, coming up. Okay, cool, yeah. So oh. nice guy. Wow. Gross with a pretty hand, but. I mean, he's watching these other guys play pots. <clears throat> Curious to see what he's going to do here. He's about to lose 40% of his chips in the blinds, and he's he's going to gonna just take the blinds. What are you saying? Me... Doesn't want to yeah. stake his tournament life on I that one under the gun. Know, we just yeah, disciplined. This. We when we did the interview, but that doesn't sound familiar. <laughs> yeah. It's not ringing a bell to me. I mean, the pr one of the problems he has at some point is they're all three about the same, but he's the one who is the worst in terms of blind situation, right? Like, technically, he actually has the least of them right now looking at it, although they're all really close. And he's he's the one who's about to take the big blind. Bedell just took his, and Paul just took his. So if they were interested in outweighing him, they actually could. So not sure. I, I agree and disagree. So he's about to put in a hundred. Yeah. But Bedell's going to get caught in the 
in the next blind, in the next level, when the blinds go up. And Paul Pua is only a couple of seats to the left of Jeff, so. No, I, I, well, I mean, I think the counter argument more than that is that I don't know if the other guys are going to just fold their way into the bubble, right? Yeah. So I, I, I don't know if, I, I doubt Paul passes the hand Jeff just folded. No, given no, what we've no, seen Paul yeah, no chance. Yeah, no chance. I, I don't think he does either. Yeah, Antonius. So Antonius, what happened here? Did he just flat Tom in position? I believe he ISO'd. Oh, Tom limped? Well, this, this isn't a three bet pot. 475 minus 125, 350. So Tom, yeah, who had Tom limped, yeah, no, nice. yeah, no equity, just picked up something on the four. But I think he's quite aware that Patrick has check back range here, given that he's the chip leader and Patrick has a lot of chips. He doesn't want to get check raised. I'm sure he. Uh, it's pretty reasonable to assume Patrick would call a bet. And Tom doesn't have a hand strong enough that you really want to be firing at this pot, right? Like Tom would just love to give a free card. I mean, obviously, if he if there's some fold equity, it's another story. But I think Tom accurately sussing out that there isn't much, and we'll see on a blank. Patrick just happy to go to the river. Wow. <coughs> and Tom runs out the straight. PLO for you. You know how everybody says that's short deck. Okay. Well, it's kind of the same. Short deck and PLO are a lot more similar in that regard. <laughs> it's PLO for you. The six four three on the the deuce ten jack finds a way to make a straight. And um, yeah, I do apologize. Tom raised pre from the calf. Yeah, and, and Patrick just flatted, huh? Yeah. So Patrick taking the passive line with this for ICM reasons actually is going to end up costing him the pot because if he three bet Tom, either Tom probably folds this hand, but if he calls, Patrick probably just. Just pots, gets in on the flop, and Tom's out. But Patrick played this very passively. Which and I understand, right? You're third in chips from an ICM point of view. Sure, but uh, it's interesting to note because it has almost one of the best hands you can possibly have, like double suited aces. Yeah. Right? I mean, the only thing better would be if that six was more connected to the big cards. But, but um, I mean, this is a tough call because it's not only the straight but also the flush. In fact, he's probably thinking it's more likely if he's beat, Tom has a flush. He's also not blocking hearts. But then again, if Tom can't beat a good one pair, such as ace-jack or so, or better, he'd pr he might bluff here. So Patrick with a pure bluff catcher. Aces do block ace-three. And the six blocks six three, but no hearts. And interestingly enough, despite blocking the straight more than the flush, t Tom does have a straight. Yeah, and Antonis would have to be hoping that Duan's turning a pair with one heart type holding into a bluff, which I'm not sure they necessarily do. No, he, he queens with the might. heart, right? Like no, he he wouldn't bluff with queens. Yeah. Not never bluff with a hand that could beat a jack. That's for sure. And he probably wouldn't bluff a ten. So Tom Dwan up to four point seven million in chips. But yeah, I mean, I think for for it's an interesting decision not to three bet the double suited aces. Um, <coughs> I mean, given that Tom is playing almost every hand. So you're saying if you were a betting man, you would have bet on Patrick free betting the ace, yeah. ace queen. Yeah, taking the ICM risk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sucks when you go out, but the flip side is, uh, I mean, I don't know. Chips are still worth something, and, and Patrick can easily play to win this tournament, Definitely. right? So I don't know. It, in my calculation, I feel like it's probably worth it but uh, Patrick came up with a different answer and I don't know who's right it's a it's an interesting question well if you want to bet alongside us here in the commentary booth boys and girls just saw the poly market Is promo of the leading information markets you can train trade on some of the most hotly debated topics whether it's the Triton poker series politics current events 
or the next quote that Brian Rust comes up with. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Conor McGregor? <laughs> Colby Covington? Oh, it's got to be somebody oh, new. Yeah? I, I mean... I mean, to be fair, when it comes to UFC, it's, uh, it's, it's a few characters. 190 mm, more? Yeah, mm -hmm. I got one. Okay, I, 190 behind. 190 <coughs> behind? I, I raised 90. 140. So, Dwan. Good to me. I'm going to pass up the opportunity to steal blinds in the big blind ante. See what our man JG wakes up with in the big. I mean, given what we've seen of Jeff so far, he's going to be playing super tight in this spot to preserve his tournament life. And so this, this hand not going to even be an interesting decision. Wow. Wow, JG just couldn't have like ace king XX there. A little ace queen suited. I don't I wonder what I wonder how good that hand has to be for JG to play it. So you got I mean he's he's about to buy himself a free orbit right right. ID. Yeah. I, I Literally. Now so really no, minus reaction. 25. Yeah, but it's I don't want to get screwed where it doesn't reopen. Really 165 behind. 145 and strong with 65 though. It's it's it's, it's going to do something, don't worry. <laughs> it's Paul. Don't worry, we're all right. Got him right where we want him. Uh, I know we're needing the chips to charm. You can keep them. No. <laughs> Our are full. I'm. Tong gets to open close to range now. Yeah, with all three of these <laughs> stacks super short. I mean, we saw Patrick just didn't double three bet double suited aces. So I mean, Tom. Tom should be playing like a hundred percent of hands. Yeah, basically. I mean, the only concern is. You have a very competent PLO player in the big form of Jeremy Osmus, but ace king queen ten. Yeah, yeah, so that's actually true. So it's maybe not, you know, <laughs> trips in your hand or whatever, just because because of Osmus. But one twenty. Wow, Jeremy with. Mm. A legit hand. Must mm. defend. Wow. It's about as helpless wow. as you can feel, yeah. Brian, as a poker That's professional. <laughs> this type of money bubble. Wow, and a both flop top pair, but this is, I mean, a much better flop for Tom. Both. Both actually, as you can see with the numbers, but even in how they're going to perceive it, because not only does he have the ace king with the kicker, but he's got just three live kickers to all make um, top two. Whereas Jeremy's got a pair in his hand, so yeah, a ten rolling off would be money, but it's way less likely to improve, right? He has three jacks and two tens <coughs> and two kings, whereas Tom has. So that's only seven outs, whereas Tom has uh, 11. And there's one of them. It's the clubs. I mean, the 10, obviously the money card for Osmus, right? Tom gets top two and Osmus makes that set of 10s. That would be... You just want to see blood out in these streets. Bro. Uh, I mean, th this card... I mean, this is one of Osmus's worst cards in the deck. So, Tom bets here, which he probably will. It's going to be pretty hard for Osmus to continue. And Tom should bet here with aces and kings because, I mean, he's going to bluff here quite a bit. Yeah, it's a turn card that he would... Yeah, he would barrel on a lot, right? So he definitely wants to get action when he has a hand this strong. Uh, looks like he's going for a size that would ask Jeremy for all of it on the river should Osmus call here on the turn. Setting up a very natural river SPR of less than one, or about 0.85 by the looks of things. 
A swift fold from Jeremy. I mean, everyone here is going to have pretty strong awareness of what they should be doing in this situation, right? The fact that Tom is going to be playing super aggressive on the bubble. But when you're as handcuffed as oh, half these players are, how, how do you proceed, Brian? Like, what's the play here? Are we just waiting for top 5% of range? Are we just... You know, trying to wait each other out and just sneak into the money, get that min cash, but not put ourselves in a position to go on and win the tournament? Yeah, I mean, I think you just have to be aware of all of the above. I mean, that's actually part of the reason why I'm saying I probably would have three bet Patrick's hand <clears throat> versus Tom. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Patrick came up with a different answer. Um, oh, look at this pull in the big. With just, what, 160 behind? Thereabouts. Wow, Tom. On, just getting smacked by the deck. I mean, is this a spot where he's going to be opening wide? But he's just actually getting good hands. <laughs> I mean, ace, king, queen, 10. Double suited queens with an ace. I mean, this is a, this is a pretty hand here. Absolute cruise control right now. What's the next level? So after 25k, 50k. Jeff with a pretty hand, but he's not going to play this. Yeah. 30k, 60, so. Nice hit. Wow. I do you. Tom I showed it. A little bit. Have you played Badoogie? No. That's a good hand. You tried an event? Badoogie. Triple draw. Yeah. I guess Badoogie even better, yeah. Yeah, Badoogie. Fun game. All offsuit. Ace 2, 3, 4 offsuit. Best hand. You go low and you go offsuit. Badoogie's like a nitty game, though, right? More than triple draw? Yeah. You can't mess around as much. I mean, people play it pretty loose, though, honestly. Right, but I mean, you're not supposed to, right? right. Like, people raise drop 2 from, like, all the spots all the time. I don't think you're really supposed to do it. Oh, JG's getting the... They're they're misrepresenting yeah, Badoogie. It's a beautiful a game that actually, like, my opinion is it's a, a game right. with even more action. So one of the it's things fun. to me as a mixed game player, yeah. it's annoying. Like sometimes limit triple draw like six or seven handed. Yeah, mm. Ranges are super ago, handcuffed and everybody's and played the game a decent amount. So yeah, everybody just plays like pretty similar. Limit triple draw. Yeah, but limit Badoogie. Now there's a game where people have different ideas and both the starting hands and then post while they're drawing. So I actually think it's a, it's a more fun game with, with a little more action than triple draw. Like full ring, six, which is for those games like six or seven handed. Now short handed, it's a different story. Both triple draw opens up a little bit. And you get people playing a little uh, more creatively. Wow, Loverick just folds <coughs> the aces. Wow. So Loverick, we're seeing the ICM effects there. Wow. He is just waiting for these short stacks. I think he's decided these stacks are so short that I'm just going to wait it out. Right? Like, I will wait one or two orbits and just pay the blinds and um, make the money. Yeah, Jeff with the ace, queen, jack, four, triple. He knows that when that big blind comes around, he's basically going to be forced all in. It's big blind first. Yeah, and he's against what he figures is a super wide opening range. And we can see this is the first time Tom has had a dustier hand in a while. Wow. Oh, yeah, let's go, JG. He's actually in decent shape against this hand. Maybe maybe like 60-40. Probably oh, maybe 59-41, something like that. A couple of diamonds dead. Elton's hand. How much is that? Does this reopen the action? It does. So if Elton comes in, Tom can re-raise, although I don't know if he will. Because... Ace is dead, by the way. Loverick folded. It's bad for Jeff that the ace is dead. He has, he, has Tom, he has... I mean, that's a lockdown card versus Tom if Elton doesn't come in, right? I mean, an ace... Hard, pretty hard for Tom to win now. You got to make two pair plus minimum. So, 
Elton. Yeah. Elton has a lot more chips than all three of the short stacks, so yeah, my guess is this is supposed to be a pass. But again, Elton probably doesn't care about the 60k bubble too much. I will take them with you to the studio. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Fold. But I, I do think I like folding mm. this here. Okay. Got a wife and a kid, Elton. Lay it down. <laughs> no gimbal, no future, the... <laughs> uh -huh. I don't bust the money. The money. The money. <laughs> <laughs> But I messed up the race. So I didn't Do you think Tom's ever oh. said to just fold him? I'm not folding if he shows. Huh? I'm not folding if he shows. Apparently not. That's an interesting question. Uh, a, I don't know. Fuck about the race. I mean, the problem <laughs> is. Brutal. Yeah. Important. I mean, he's calling what, like 55k I mean, more to that. get. I'm never really like in great yeah. shape. It's really tight fold. Spawn. Oh, I, uh, uh, huh? Finds the five. It's a lot of outs, though. I mean, Tom doesn't become yeah, that big a favorite on this. Nah, he's in good ace, shape. queen, all, but there's no aces. Behind, you know. Ooh, now hearts and a deuce. That was a big card for JG. Heart, deuce, ace, queen, queen jack, jack, seven, seven. Ace, jack, six, seven. No ace, remember. Come on, JG. Let's do this, buddy. I know. Oh, that feels like it's not oh, one of them. Good game, boys. Good luck. Wow. Five wins. Oh, fuck. Good fold, old hen. Mm. Good fold. Yes. Huh? You didn't hit it? You missed? So I don't mess up a pair of five. You were just cool, right? Takes the spawn. Wow. If you play. Yeah. You call and then Tom can reshuffle? No. No, I couldn't. No. I fucked up the race. Two time bench? Damn. Good fold. <laughs> you call, you shove up. Yeah. Huh? You call, you shove up. Oh, I, I don't think it hit my first shot. Does Elton ever bust there? This blind v blind. JG, valiant effort from our man. First try and event, first final table. Just couldn't get it done against the 100% range of Tom Dwan. GG's in the chat all around. Ay yeah, ay yeah, indeed. That's uh, that's grim. We are now on the stone bubble. However, Paul Pua on three bigs, Tom Bedell on six, Elton Tang on seven. Philip Lovric safe for now. Fifteen big blinds. In fourth, following the aces there. Yeah. Thoughts on that, Brian? I mean, I think his stack is getting short enough. I mean, out of the non-short players, he's the shortest by a lot, a right? And I mean, he has him. half yeah, as many so chips like as Patrick, so, he needed, so he's well behind that clump up up top. I lose to him, so. Yeah. So he to I think <laughs> his stra I he strategy at this point to just wait out the bubble is probably the right uh, one. Mm. Like, on if he just doesn't just play anything, really, I mean, maybe he loses <laughs> another, maybe he hits the blind <laughs> one more time. <laughs> probably that'll be enough for the bubble. So, um, and then he just <laughs> makes the 60K <laughs> yeah. as opposed to gambling now. And even like doubling up, I mean, he's so far behind Tom at this point. Like, yeah, it increases his chance of getting like third plus like quite a bit but at winning like not a ton you know so i actually think it's it's probably Shh. probably the right play my, my even at this point Big where tom coming. now is, i mean tom yeah, only had 3.4 <laughs> tom has won over two million chips since the really start of this table that, he's at five and a half number. yeah you might be the right play for money. everybody at this point you do well, i guess you have a i mean lot. all those like three top or stacks or like how, many, how many times 20 He's, he's just been always been in day two. Poor. Yeah, I noticed. He has chips. Usually one like, like, I've never seen him not. Bait Bedell <laughs> into like getting involved, saying, saying the blind's coming. Like I was like, hey, maybe. But I have more yeah. chips than you, pal. Quite the waiting <gasps> game. <sighs> oh, this well, is just I give you a present. <laughs> present. All right. Wow, oh, present yeah. announced. Maybe you take now. <laughs> if I don't take, it's no questions. 
<laughs> I mean, this is one. And I'm weighing. Please don't call. Tom might want to <laughs> let him take it. I mean, right? No. Don't, not sure Tom wants to break the bubble, but. Uh, uh, it was just a call. Does those work? No. <laughs> yeah, I'm very surprised that Tom's flicking in the call here. Wow. Uh, just a moment. I have to take out some more uh, cash. I have, oh. I have eight credit cards. <laughs> I use them. <laughs> what? Get nine. That like is good. Four. That is good, and those are good. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I have kings. That's, that's a nice son. <laughs> <coughs> wow. That's hilarious. What a great slow yeah. roll. Uh, um, <laughs> with two kings, you could. Seven, eight of clubs. Mm. Seven, oh, yeah. Eight of clubs. Seven, eight of clubs. Awesome. Done. Don't tell that. <laughs> if I lose with no. that, it's that's okay. The, yeah, <laughs> he's actually yeah. not drying dead. Really he can hit the done. seven, eight in clubs. Like... <laughs> Two and then one out possibility for Tom to make a no straight flush. No question, Paul. Sorry for that. <laughs> but I'll reach him for the credit cards, eh? Seven or eight credit cards this man's got. Not a good gift he gave you. Mm. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Did indeed. Well, now no. Paul no, me and you. has to gamble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of many you want. <laughs> he has half as many 16. chips as Elton. So. Damn, we're in 60 already. And 60. it looks and like if he takes the blinds, oh, it's going to be almost all of them. The 170k, the big and small blind plus the Annie is 150k in total. So. Good dealer, good flop. I like you, sir. <laughs> My new friend. Smiling now. <laughs> Come, buddies. Big car, give me all the big car. And you see this, and you now understand why Philip folded the aces even more. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, given how some are willing to gamble, I do also wonder about the ace queen jack four. Maybe, maybe need a bigger hand there. I mean, we can see one of the issues is you're you're not that big of a favorite, even against some pretty junky holdings. If some of these, like Tom, is going to gamble. Tough, tough spot. I, I'm not. No, I don't know how to do. When you don't know how to do full. Not sure. You so fall, I, I fall. <laughs> guess you if Osmus is me? playing this hand, it's because Tom <laughs> is not in position. And sure enough, Tom is in a small blind. I don't know what to do. So oh, what am I doing here? <laughs> Any position I have. <laughs> Okay, guys, better. Oh, whoa, whoa. Did, oh, you guys called? Sorry. <laughs> I thought I didn't. Yeah, I going thought the action was on Tom. <laughs> <sighs> Tom with bottom two. Does he want to. I think I'll pull double suit. Yeah, Tom is going to take the aggressive route a lot here. So. King, king, wants to just take it down. Hand. It's not going to happen king, with Jeremy's king. hand. I mean, top pair, open ender. I don't know if Patrick's going to get involved here. He's blocking the queen, but he doesn't really have many ways to improve his hand other than backdoor spades. There just aren't that many good turn cards. And he has Osmus in position. but, And I think it's like one of those things where if you're going to play super cautious, on the bubble to preserve your chips like maybe you let this one go even though obviously continuing is totally reasonable normally but like one of the ways you continue this hand is on certain cards like a 10 or a jack you have like the nut blocker so you yeah. bluff a lot 
and right like that's like a high variance lines so um like, are you looking to do that yeah like as antonius just like we saw aces get passed yeah like maybe uh pre-flop like maybe antonius you know doesn't kind of take the spot and i think one of the biggest things wasn't blind versus blind with tom right he has osmus behind him who's actually pretty likely to have hit this flop given that he limped you know so i think that's why i probably passed there but um yeah, I mean, Osmus just hits his, like, stone number one card. I mean, the jack actually makes a bigger straight, right? Antonius has blockers to it as well. But How much is the pot? 400. And Osmus might just go ahead and bet the pot here. I think he's supposed to. I mean, he, he's... You're on the bubble. Yeah. The stone bubble, you know. You want to deny as much equity as possible, which seems kind of insane, right? When you have the nuts, but... I, I mean, it's not like he's betting many other hands here, right? It, you could maybe argue he, he, he mm -hmm. could maybe bet some hands like king jack 10 or something and then just like fold if he got check potted you know but um oh, but yeah he just has the nuts there a ton so when he bets so there's just no reason to go small and yeah like you said it's on the bubble Another nice hand that he's not gonna play. Boy. The pain. <laughs> yeah, look, he's he's annoyed. This guy, this guy plays PLO. That's for sure. He does indeed, Small man. Bubble. He's uh, okay. like the aces. He didn't even think about it. He just kind yeah. of rolled his eyes That's in his mouth. Seems like he <laughs> was more annoyed passing the nine eight seven six single. Oh. I can't say I blame him. Tell him not to waste every time. <laughs> no way he's not going to do that. <laughs> but they'll a complicated brain. Let me just get out of this. So a couple more hands until oh. Paul is in the big. And, well, most likely going to be forced to go with it. The question remains, yeah. is he going to wait for the big blind or is he going to take one of the next two hands to do it? I mean, I think he should try to take one of the next two hands. I mean, if he gets absolute terrible, terrible hands, then you, you, you can't do it. But, you know, the flip side is, I mean, when he has to post that big blind ante, <laughs> it's kind of brutal, right? Can you? Yes. Should you? Because it's such a big portion of his chips that kind of he can't win. Like it's much nicer to try to play something before. See the flop. Someone raise call. Ah, the wrong. No. You feel really dumb if you lift the six, seven, eight, nine. The big blind has like ten, 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 three. You know, <laughs> would have folded here. <laughs> Let's see. What a dream spot for Tom. Yeah. As you mentioned earlier on. It's chipped up over two million alone. Yeah, I mean it's interesting. It's, it's 
it reminds a little bit about short deck, right? Yeah. Where on the bubble, you just get a runaway chip leader being able to raise every hand. Yeah, and I mean, it's people just folding big hands to it, <laughs> right? So, and, and in that sense, short deck about, plays right? you know, plays more. I mean, the big difference, obviously, being pot limit versus being able to go all in. You know, short deck has played no limit. But I, I believe, I think actually one of the remaining short deck tournaments, somebody told me yesterday they're they're playing pot limit preflop. Maybe it's the last one. The fit there's really. I, I, I <coughs> last night at the players' party, I think somebody said that. I don't even know that one. Oh, right we'll get confirmation on that shortly. That looks like Dempsey's got the Madrid schedule Where in his hand. That's oh, now this, yeah, Paul's going to play this. Oh, oh, this is the hand. Oh, this hand? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Every other hand. Yeah. Well, yeah, Paul's going to take this. <laughs> <that's laughs> 70. Yeah, yeah, double yeah. suited ace king. Yeah. I mean, definitely good enough. Good as it's uh, gonna get. Yeah. You can make 210, you can make it. Yeah. And Everybody Tom should <laughs> definitely <laughs> pass this. Let somebody else do his work here because this is a good spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. Nice of you. But Patrick <laughs> should definitely right not pass right this. Block. Only one suit, that's why. Yeah. Patrick is one of the players who most wants to get this bubble over with. He's in position on Tom yeah, and handcuffed. True. And that's I mean, he has point. a pretty good hand anyway, but it would have been curious if his hand wasn't quite so strong. <laughs> 60K money bubble. And actually, that was part of the reason why Patrick just calls here, because he's pretty happy to let someone else in, even if it means maybe him losing the pot, if that player can beat Paul. Yeah, Osmus, Osmus somebody Osmus else. also incentivized to... But he felt his hand was maybe a little too weak. Uh, yeah. But I, I think there would have been an, a lot of implicit okay, collusion we'll between Patrick and Osmus. I probably would have just called anything. I on flushes now. Trying to, trying to bust Paul here. Like, I don't think Patrick is going to be uh, bluffing Osmus out of any, you know, with zero side pot in a spot where they both really want to call to bust. Yeah, of course. So I, I probably, even though that hand was pretty dusty, I probably play Osmus's hand. No, I'm nine. Oh, nine high flop. Bad news, Paul needs to find a deuce or a six. Five outs twice, a running clubs. No. Yeah, pretty grim run out for Paul here. Who's near flip has, has become a two outer. Ace will chop it. Okay, GG. No <laughs> dice. GG's all around. For Paul as he is eliminated on the bubble oh, here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <And> number 11. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I fight. <laughs> now I pop, pop, pop. Small bubble, is that what you're thinking? <laughs> small bubble? <laughs> Dancing, so happy. It was so small. <laughs> so he dances First when he wins Hunter. Triton trophies. And he dances when he busts on the bubble. <laughs> Pretty balanced. <laughs> it's the balanced dancing range right there. So, a quick look at the payout. So, a runaway chip leader, Tom Dwan, eyeing up his first Triton trophy and 290,000 euros. But everyone, a sigh of relief. As the bubble has burst here. 60,000 euros locked up. And I believe I'm going to check out some poor, poor footage. Couldn't get it done. A couple of hands that felt like could have gone either way pre-flop. Juan just kept using that chip lead to 
push him around and ultimately bows out in seventh with a little boogie at the end there. A little yeah. shimmy. 60,000 euros. I feel like I I wouldn't be dancing, to be perfectly honest with you. I, I, I just think he's had, I mean, he won his That's first Triton title. He's probably pretty happy with this series. If you're going to bubble, I guess picking one of the, maybe actually this was the smallest tournament at Triton so far this series because uh, even though there was the 20K no limit, technically smaller buy-in, it had a much larger field. So, True. yeah, he's just, you know, the player party last night. <laughs> you know, he, Triton's gone well. Paul's probably pretty happy with things all in all. You know, I heard there's a bunch of big developments. You know, we got to see the video of the, the app that they're putting out yep. as well as, you know, the potential stop. Uh, after the WSOP, I think guys are excited about that. So, you know, Paul, whatever, 25K. I mean, I, last night, actually, after the player party, there were three games going up in the sixth floor or whatever in here, and Paul was in one of them, drinking and happy. It was like 100, 200, 400, no limit. I mean, you know, so. Yeah. Over, Over-unders on four hours of sleep for Paul last night? Yeah, well maybe I'll take I'll take over four. Okay. Although maybe I'm uh, definitely taking under six, <laughs> under maybe even under five. So maybe I don't know. Well, now that the bubble has burst, we have the well. It's not really the official final table, but the boys are going to take a picture together. You know, six yeah. of them have locked up some money, sixty thousand guaranteed and let's just take a quick look at the overall leaderboard coming in to the money tom Dwan, 90 bigs second in chips i mean look at this drop off brian this is absolutely insane this could be over and done with i mean with with given how short tom and elton are Dwan just gets to continue bullying patrick and jeremy right yeah but i think now i mean listen go over to the payouts oh we're not gonna go to the yeah, listen, there's a lot to play for, and you ladder up each time. I think now that the bubble's been burst, these guys are going to open up. They're going to try to win. Patrick's in position. He's gonna not going to let Tom – he's not going to let Tom just open anything. He's not flatting the double-suited aces next time. Here are the single-suited aces. You know, it's going to be different. Wait, so two sixties. we have, we have our I didn't order dark one. horse, no, oh, oh, I wanted a menu Philip Lavrik. He's not passing the aces. I mean, it's uh, it's time for this guy to open up, and we're going to hopefully get to see him play a little bit. Uh, have a feeling it, we're in store for something special there. So, yeah, it's it's going to be different. Uh, Tom is still going to play a lot of hands, but the rest of the table is not going to just sit around and let him do that. Tom? Um. Yeah, I'd love Wait, to see Lovric uh, double. See what he's made of. Osmus with an interesting <laughs> hand here. It's nice pretty annoying, though, here. small blind, worst position. He's thinking, yeah, maybe if I call, the big blind comes in, we end up getting a really good price to try to flop an eight or at least the nut flush draw. Hand's pretty connected. It's, this is a dicey spot. As we can see, actually, if it's pretty likely Elton re-raises here, so... He's probably going to lose that 80,000 if he puts it in the pot because Elton goes all in. All in. <laughs> Elton sang in great shape. I'd say great shape at 62, oh, yeah. 40. He actually, I mean, that's pretty good shape for PLO. That's, that's and so Tom's definitely, I mean, we saw a 10 was folded. No shoot. Uh, which is <laughs> huge for yeah. Elton. But Dookie! <laughs> Tom's only single suited. 250? What's a good block? Deuce, deuce, deuce. 
Wow. <laughs> just, just, just. <laughs> Typical. If it's your <laughs> day, it's your day, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a grim flop for Elton, that's for sure. Elton drawing to two outs once. We'll have our first casualty in the money. It's impossible to beat him. Don't <laughs> even try. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently that is the case today, as Tom Dwan scores himself another KO. Elton Tang. At least he made six. the money. He did. I mean... The game over. One of the most entertaining players to watch here at the Triton Series. Scores himself another cash. Yeah, well... Good game, Elton. I had a few drinks with him. Not, not last night, but the night night before. No way. Went out late. A few met drinks? Up, met, yeah, met up with the boys at, at the club. Actually, Paul and Elton were there. Elton was having a good time. Yeah, that was that was a fun one. That's that all I'm going to share like about a, that. That sounds like a messy one, mate. Yeah. That's yeah, I headed over there at 3 a.m. Yeah, so. that sounds like you know you get back to the hotel room when the sun's already up, kind of thing. <laughs> People are on their way to work. That was a good time, Elton. Elton's just—I mean, he's just cashing everything, isn't he? It's been doing pretty well this series, yeah. One? Did you have a suit with your aces? Close call. One was a suit. Really? Still full? Wow. Second cash oh, in the series, I should say. I feel like you're supposed to spite there. Spite pot. Even if it's pot, it's tough not to. You got a spite pot. And that's why I think you're just out of falling everything. What? You're out of falling everything. In my spot. I think spite pot. With three. Yeah. Yeah, Loverick, uh, I guess, yeah, is now publicly folded like aces. Three to yeah. six blinds or something. Yeah. It's pretty extreme. I think you're the only person at the table that would have folded that. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Thanks. Only, two on, only big blind over there. We were too I, I fall over right? anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can have some stuff I fold. Like, yeah, of course. If I have a hand that plays bad versus like aces or kings, I'm going to fold. But if I have like a queen 10 8 5, I'm getting in there. But they'll start to pick up aces this time in the money, though. Mm. 76,500 locked up. What? No, all in, all in. Please fall. Now Bedell has the right idea. I Similar stack given <laughs> the blinds and not limping under the gun. Just pot it. Thank you, sir. No, <laughs> come on, Patrick. I want your chips. Well, Patrick. <laughs> it's so big difference. <laughs> Hand super handcuffed here because Bedell's ace queen jack interaction just smashing the queen jack 10. We can see he's, I mean, well over a two to one dog. Well, I play anyone except him. So, ends up Good avoiding fall. that spot oh. would have been grim. <laughs> Too bad we can't rabbit hunt. <laughs> can't what? Oh, well. Rabbit hunt. Yeah. Well, it, haven't you looked? The hand doesn't matter at all. <laughs> it, whatever he have comes. So. <laughs> Still Here's rocking like the old eight, Gucci 90, 10 bucket hat. Eight time. <laughs> With any cards. <laughs> it's been in the mix in almost every event, Brian. <laughs> yes. He's out there. And oh, he's he's like to the, Tom's promoter right now. Today. Hmm. Or cigar. Oh, it can come much sooner for sure. Hmm.
He's doing all Tom's dirty work for him. He nope. wins every pot, makes every hand. Tom's like sending him texts. Just, yeah, keep it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> keep letting these guys know how this is going to go down. I'm going to win. You're playing for second. I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is absolutely brilliant, man. Love the verbal jousting. Oh, wow, Antonius. With a hand that... Wow, he raised the pot. Okay. Yeah, he's... Ha you know, that's what I said. Forget not forget not three-betting the double-suited aces. Antonius is coming. He's. It's like we made the money. We, we even made another payout. Like, let's play to win this now. And Tuan was just talking about hands that don't necessarily perform well against aces. Yeah, but we can see Patrick doesn't need to have aces here. Everyone else watching from the sidelines absolutely loving this. Yeah. First and second in sorry, first and third in chips. Going at it pre-flop. Patrick got, making got a funny feeling, you know. This is this is about as light of a hand as I think Patrick would do it with though. Be a little nice for him if it was double, but it's not. And, ooh, wow. What do you do now, SPL 0.5? I mean, I almost think you just have to give this one up. Like, it's going to be pretty hard for Tom not to have hit that going in, getting three to one. Yeah. And he starts just give it up. <laughs> he's... he's <laughs> I'm sorry, Patrick isn't happy about this one. I mean, he wouldn't have his chips and, and just can't even. <laughs> He's laughing too, so I, I don't feel so bad anymore. I mean, what an annoying uh, he spot. He gets it. He gets yeah. it. The Tom shows the ace. I mean, ace six, I think he showed. That's huge. I mean, on the flop. it honestly does feel like everyone's playing for second now. I don't even look at my cards. I know it's 90-10 anyways. <laughs> it's just, but now it's just like, <laughs> hey, listen, boys, you know, you're not going to beat him. It's In a way, it's almost like making people do it more. It's like raving, waving the red bull, I mean, the red flag in front of the bull. Guys, you're not going to beat Tom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 6.5 million, Tom with over 60% of the chips in play. I mean, the size of his stack, at some point they're going to have to color some of those up for the 100k chips because they won't be able to, the dealer won't be able to get the cards around that stack. And now Osmus is directly out of position to Tom and second in chips, so it's even the, the chip configuration at the table, super good for Tom. Tom is just going to go ham. And now we get to see Lovrick with an interesting decision. Like, do you defend here? Or, I mean, he is the shortest stack now, it appears. But if he passes, can he slide up? I mean, Osmus has a lot, but still a big difference between here and third. Legend. So. Stupid question. Why don't you ask what what would be the next race? The next race, all in. <laughs> I know that already. <laughs> I feel like we're going to be seeing more of this young Swede. Future trying events, if there are. PLO MTTs on the schedule. Yep. <coughs> yeah. But I got you in the heads up because you need to play the short deck. I can play into two more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think <coughs> it looks like Osmus uh, is just going to do a lot of waiting. He's got 1.8. He's in second yeah, by a mile. He's just going to try to at least get down to third or second and just it's never like not play away. any hands, right? Maybe this is the only spot. Maybe he defends his big blind with a super strong hand versus a Tom open here, right? 
but then you can do after winning every part. Yeah. <laughs> Beat us. It was exactly the same yesterday. Really? I was 30 in a row. <laughs> yeah, Lavrik is. I mean, I think he's probably figuring that between Antonius and Bedell, they're going to maybe play some hands he feels like they shouldn't, so he can slide up despite the fact that he's the shortest deck. Although here we'll see. Oh. Double suited queens. You can ask one of the guys over there if they'd grab, like next to Andy. Against a guy playing what? a lot of hands, this could figure to be a From like Uber Eats? solid favorite. From Uber Eats? And it is worth a lot to him to double here. Because it could get him solidly in a chance to get third, whereas right, right now he'll he'd be struggling to try to get third place. Yeah, this, <laughs> is, Ooh. this is really close. Bless you. I think given how this table is played so far, <laughs> thank you. I could certainly <laughs> get behind <laughs> folding just Ooh. because uh, Antonius even has shown signs of getting involved in big pots with Tom. I mean, the crazy thing though is. What is Osmus going to do if Lovric comes over the top? Yeah, because, I mean, Lovric has a really strong range there. But he, he has double-suited kings, and he comfortably covers Lovric. Yeah, he does say run it. I'm going to shy away from taking the spot. Yeah, I don't blame him, actually. You can see if Osmus folds, Lovric is going to be in great shape. Lovric <laughs> finally plays a hand and pot. Yeah, uh, if Osmus plays this, he can't call and let Tom in. You just need to pot. And the crazy thing is, this action happened and nobody has aces, which isn't very likely. Oh. So Tom probably thinks he's in better shape than he is. I mean, he's in bad shape because he's up against kings and queens. One, six, uh, really, nine, five, all he has working for him is the so king jack ten two. and the clubs. Even exactly his deuce is covered by Osmus. So Okay. You guys have fun. Yeah. The only chance you had. Wow. Nice. Tom would want it anyway, so you were lucky there. <laughs> yeah, Tom. You want your hand back? No. Double King Jack double also. King Jack then. Jesus, did he just call his hand? <laughs> Who, Tom Bedell? No, Lovric. <laughs> King Jack 10? I mean, did Tom say that or did Lovric just. <laughs> did he just I have absolutely I'm no idea, but I'd like. To, I mean, Jeremy Osmus, one of the, the nicest guys in. Ooh. Hello. Uh, well, we do know King Jack 10 has out. been folded. Wow. Diamonds are working. <laughs> Is that Four. eight very live? Four. Eight or a queen needed. No dice for the young Swede. Lovric out in fifth. Never really managed to get anything going here, but still must be pretty proud of himself for nursing that short stack on the bubble and. Only Not only that, managing to uh, ladder yeah. one spot <laughs> anyway, as well. The correct decision. <laughs> Seventy-six thousand five hundred euros in the back pocket. Everyone now guaranteed ninety-seven thousand and five. Yeah, he. I think that was the first pot we got to see him VPIP, and I don't blame him for his decision at all to go on with the double suited queens. Uh, feels like it's going to be good enough against Tom's range, but kind of super unlucky. I mean, Osmus probably only continues there with aces or good kings, mm. and that's Osmus just found one of those hands. Yeah, and that was so. That was bottom of the good kings hand hand bucket as well. Disaster if he has yeah. ace, queen, jack, or whatever, and you have aces and I fold. He's making chips by calling him. Yeah. If I only have one suit, too. Should 
should you pursue this as well. You will just be like dominated a fair amount too, like Waiting. ace king, jack or something. Patrick not by you, saying, but run it. Be very oh, ambitious. Yeah. And there's not many hands on folding there. Yeah, I mean, you both have high cards, like, you know? a ton, like, almost a lot. I probably shouldn't even put in kings, I don't know. How much is it? Yeah, I was speculating if he should even put in kings, but, yeah, definitely that was towards the bottom. I mean, double suited, but not connected, really. I think given the dynamic of how wide Tom's open is going to be, then in turn means that Lovric's you know, three bet jam from the small is going to be wider as well. Uh, it's not going to be that wide. It's not going to be that wide. I mean, Lavrik actually probably had one of the weaker hands with the double suited queens. But yeah, I mean, double suited queens, kings, maybe single suited kings that are good, like king, king, go. jack, nine, single, and then aces, right? I mean, it's, it's a dicey spot with kings because then you also let Tom come in behind some. But the thing is, Tom's saying... Listen, Tom likes gambling, so maybe he's going to do anything. But the problem is that, I mean, Lovric only had like five or 600K, and Osmus has like 1.8. So, yeah, your your low cards are live, but you're only heads up for like most of the chips you're putting in versus Osmus, right? So I don't know how good it is that if for Tom to continue there unless he has a really good low card hand, right? Like, like you don't want to have like 10, 7, 6, 3 just because it's low. Maybe, you know, something more like 9, 8, 7, 5 or whatever. Anyways. My big tooper. Tuan. Uh, just leave jamming with the jack high spades. Tony's calling off with bottom two. But you can see he's 44, right? And that's because it's not just the spade flush draw. He can run out some two pairs and straights um, with all those other cards in his hand. Yeah, it's in pretty good shape, all things considered. Could just <laughs> yeah. be absolutely dead here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's a pretty good way to put it. 44% is. <laughs> You're doing backflips in your head because you can literally have like 10. Yeah. Like if your spades are covered. Oh, wow. I mean, it is just oh. Tom's day. I mean, I guess this isn't over yet. Yeah, but was anyone expecting the board to pair? No I surprise, mean, Tom can't Patrick, lose it. he haven't lost a pot for two days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Ryan, just like that. If you me. guys are going to play this Jotex, should we just split? I take the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not playing like Jotex a lengthy either. bubble. <laughs> Are you not playing so I'm leaving tomorrow. I don't know how it's many three. hours I won. So I just, <laughs> he will stay on the table. I'm now guaranteed a six-figure pay jump. We almost don't have to commentate today. Uh, yeah, Tom, Tom and Tom doing it for us. Yeah. And uh, too bad Patrick, a, a PLO legend. Been playing huge takes PLO forever. I was kind of hoping to see him and Tom battle some shorthanded and more equitable situation but uh we didn't get that and it, i mean it, this is shaping up to be osmus and tom heads up i mean i don't want to discount bedell but he's significantly shorter now i mean yeah you know, osmus 2.4 tom everything and bedell on fumes Yeah, can and I will say, not exactly the winner's attitude right now. <laughs> Don't think he thinks he can beat Tom Dwan. That's very true, yeah. We did take that spot on the direct bubble, the king, queen, jack, nine, and you could in now, some worlds call ICM suicide. Now propelled him into three-handed play. I, I almost... So Osmus with an interesting spot because it's like Tom oh, can I put a lot of pressure on him. List. <laughs> Doesn't. <laughs> but he does really <coughs> want to bust to Tom. Here maybe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's an any cards game. But, uh, very few hands I fall against you, but this one is one of them. Ah.
Now, I think Tom's just going to open anything here. Can you show me the flop? Are there any deuces or sixes there? <laughs> Maybe you can just leave it on there, yeah. Yeah, talk about getting dealt bottom of range in the big. We've had that on several occasions oh, today. Oh, I only play aces, you know that. Yeah, queen so six six two have, single uh, is bad, but it's not like the stone like worst hand. We actually saw it had behind. like over forty percent equity against the ace king eight well, four. Yeah, play you have, before the aces comes. <laughs> you have three thirty behind. Yeah, yeah. six yeah. forty. So I will play even kings this time. Hmm. <laughs> so he's gonna play kings this time. All right. Not just aces, eh? Yeah, Mr. Bedell with a lot of verbal jousting coming out and like I can up this pretty arm. sure he's going to play much wider than kings. So is there ever a world where... Okay. I promise it will be call or fall. Past this spot, Brian. Bah. One more free hand. I, I it wasn't that one I was Man, for. I don't know. How much was it? I mean, the problem at five and the three. He's got I'm four used big blinds. I guess I, I probably go with it. <laughs> I guess. You know, an interesting question, though. I mean, oh, he's calling. Yeah, I mean, he did say pre-flop, he's like, it's either going to be cool or fold. He's like, I'm not all in. Please give me a set at least. Hmm? <laughs> a set at least? <laughs> you need to have a pair in your hand first, but it in order to make a set, mate. Well, look at this. Tom Twant. Open-ender. Oh, little pair. Yeah. Back door hearts. <clears throat> well, I mean, if you just call. Uh, it's, it's all my chips. Okay. Then I say goodbye. Thank you for the game. Wow. Oh. Probably, uh, unfortunately, ah, eight, Mr. Six, Bedell. Way, have a Straight draw, yeah. no good. Going to need a or queen. A or queen and Tom mm. not to improve. <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> Even uh, backdoor hearts are covered. A queen. Awesome, one of Tom Twan. 84% equity to go into this heads-up match with a 3-1 to one chip go. lead over Jeremy Osmus. I mean, this could... Oh, and that's going to do it. I mean, this got down to heads-up very fast. Real quick. Dead on the turn. Brian, right, not even a sweat. Good luck, guys. Hey, good playing with you. Good playing with you, man. Very nice playing with you. And shakes all around. Nice playing with you. One of the most stylish men to have ever graced the Triton Series Halls. Bows out in third. <laughs> There's some extra noodles there Which if you want to I feel like if you had asked him coming into this final table, given the way the stacks were laid out, they'd take third. Of would course. Have, I bite mean, your hand off. Great result for uh, Tom Axel Bedell. I mean, he was one of the short stacks, and here he is, 127,000. So, you know, it'd be like asking JG, <laughs> like, would he be happy with third? I, I'm pretty sure he'd be pretty stoked. Oh, man. Could have gone, could have gone some different ways, right? Could have. You know, I mean, Bedell had that king queen jack nine. Like, what if he just gets out flop there? Yeah. You know? And then he's out, and so, well, out in third. Yeah, good result, good game, good hat. This time with the shirt matching the hat, the kind of like black and white style there. Certainly made our lives easier from the broadcast booth. His own commentary from the felt. And yeah, we are going to be going into heads up play with Jeremy Osmus' first Triton series. Yeah. Going for his first dub. But more interestingly, Tom Dwan, certainly not his first rodeo at a Triton series. But he's also going for his first Triton Trophy. So another new champion going to be crowned today.
And we've had our fair share of them already here in Madrid. I mean, two experienced players going heads up here. Um, Osmus just won that, I think it was the 50K like high roller PLO bracelet. Mm. Um, definitely has a lot of experience. So does Tom. I mean, Tom's played a lot of heads up PLO, you know, whether it was the Dur Challenge back in the day, online, everything. So this should be a good heads up match between two very experienced pros, and uh, I'm excited to see it. And we'll finally get to see s some post flop. Unfortunately, um, though, just the way this final table went down and Tom just winning all the chips, yeah. everyone getting shorter and shorter, or just everything was pre flop all in. But, but now we're going to get to see. You know, people play some flops, turns, and rivers, and uh, some very good players at that. So I'm, I'm excited. Well, we are going to be coming back for that heads-up play in around about five minutes' time, where we'll be crowning a new champion here in Madrid. See you guys shortly. We double up on everything. Come play now on GG Poker. James Dempsey, fellow mate. Yeah. Oh, we're back. We're live. <laughs> Sorry, boys and girls. We're back in the broadcast booth for event number 11. Henry Kilbane alongside 
Brian Ross, for what has been a very, well, one-sided affair, if you will, coming yeah. into this final table. Tom Dwan just stealing the show. Brian, give us a bit of insight as to what's been going on on the film. I mean, Tom Bedell kind of summarized it pretty well. Tom just, <laughs> Durr just wins every pot. Wins for two every days, hand, apparently. Two days straight. Who can beat him? Um, yeah, I mean, I was... Had my hopes up a little bit for multiple reasons coming into this. I mean, personally, obviously, want to see my boy JG do well. But even beyond that, just as like a you know a, po a poker spectator, listen from Durr's perspective, or if you're a Durr fan, you're probably super amped up. Yeah. I mean, he's just been crushing, just raising, winning every all in. Looks like he's probably gonna win. He's got like a three to one chip lead or whatever. But from a poker perspective, just a lot of pre flop all ins. Didn't get an opportunity. I mean, we wanted to see Loverick. Here's a guy who's folding aces, right? Like, what's he going to do when he gets some chips? Antonius, Antonius did take a stand with the ace, king, queen, eight. Didn't work out for him. Had to fold the yeah. flop after putting in half his stack. I mean, just, it, we didn't get to see too much. And the few times we went to a flop, it was, you know, I don't know, it, it, like that one pot. So, you know, I would have liked a bit more action, but finally we're going to get some post-flop action. What do you I, think? I believe so. I mean, Tom coming in with a 3-1 to one chip advantage, 97 bigs, plays 31. Uh, but Jeremy Osmus, as we already know, it's not his first rodeo, Brian. He's got a ton of experience playing both No Limit Hold'em and PLO MTTs. Took down the 50K in Vegas back in October, if I'm not mistaken, beating it Danny Negreanu and Phil Helmy, three-handed. Yeah. Those are that, that's why a verbally lively final table that's and they played for a while that was like the small small ball they were all going small ball i mean tom Dwan is like is going to be a different now. experience heads up um tom style not particularly small bally when compared to especially phil helmuth and but also daniel negrano at least in in plo 40. um negrano's game has changed quite a bit and no limit hold them bit less small body than he used to be well, before but anything happens here Bryant yeah can I take Osmus two to one for 50 euros T two to one sure yeah yeah books all right let's do it give, give us a bit of a bit of a sweat I feel like we got a <laughs> gotta give you two to one thank you man yeah, I, f so I feel like uh, we, we got so it's your 50 to my hundred there we go well actually I only have dollars, mate. <laughs> I actually don't have any Listen, euros. I'll let you pass on the 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 exchange rate. You know, uh, I have a hundred dollar bill. There we go. Th that I can give you if but you lose. Yeah, if I lose. I just feel like I have. Yeah, I didn't change any money. I came here. I've been. Neither have I. It just. I had yeah, one. I had tw a card. twenty euro bill, and that's it. That's all. That's all I've had to spend. I mean, here to one, I, I got to give you that. So for me, it's not even about, you know, the odds. It's just adding a little bit of spice. Well, if you had really twisted my arm, you could have just said, yeah, I'll bet you 50, you know. <laughs> like no, two to one was already a generous offer. I mean, it's like three to one in chips. So, um, here we go. This is a... We're fine. We're getting an interesting pot right off the bat. Tom is taking his hand right here, a little double gutter with the five, trying to deny some equity. If he gets called some of the time, um, he can improve two two hands that that can win. Yeah, he has equity against over pairs and obviously non non boat non flush type holdings. So now I, I mean Tom's definitely knows he's not winning this at showdown, but don't know that he has like the best combo to bluff with. I mean not blocking a diamond. But uh when you know you can't win at showdown, it's a pretty good reason to bluff. But I'm going to give this one up. And that's really good news for Jeremy, who probably just going to try to win this with nines. Yeah. And good news for you as well, Mr. Kilbane. Is indeed. As that two to one starting to look a little 
Plenty a little more like the chip count difference. Plenty. So I, saw, I wanted to get in there before the first hand was out because it's like, you know, if there's a, a big swing, probably won't have a bet on our hands. But big pickup there for Jeremy, increasing his stack by 20%. Yeah, certainly. Table not as chatty as it once was. All business now. Yeah, playing for basically 100,000 euros. Yep, 199 guaranteed. Also, both of them playing for their first Triton trophy. Jeremy flying out of town tomorrow, I believe, which if he picks this one up here, may need to pay an additional 50 euros or so for overweight baggage. Tom, definitely not flying out tomorrow because uh, that's, a, that's a man who likes him some short deck, and we have... Uh, the big short deck finale coming up. We do indeed. 100k starting today. Two reasonable hands here. A little double suited mid, with some gaps. Tom with the nut flush draw, a pair. And this is a board that favors Tom. He has the cleanest draw between the two. He's in position. Yeah, it's certainly a board that favors his hand, but not necessarily his range, right? Like, Osmus has 100% range from the big, has all the sets, all the two pairs, and turns himself two pair with a flush draw. Yeah, that's an amazing card for Jeremy. Making tens up plus hearts. I mean, could argue. It, I mean, I think it's his best card in the deck. That or the ten or the nine of hearts. Wow, Tom going for delayed stab. See Jeremy not going anywhere. Deciding on the turn that this hand plays well as a check call, I assume. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like that he just check called. I agree. It just doesn't feel like it's don't the right hand say to what start. He's yeah, there's, I just think, yeah, there's only, before he called, there was only about 400,000 in there. So you got to, you're starting to say, hey, do I want to put in another over two million? So I like that he just check called. I just don't want to take all his options off the table, but I think I agree with that play. And this is this is bad news for Jeremy. I mean, Tom going to value bet, and I just don't see how Jeremy doesn't pay this off. I mean, especially for this sizing. I mean, I, I think you can even think he's beating some value here, like pot potentially a smaller two pair, like maybe even aces or something, right? So, yeah, yeah pretty easy call. Yeah, nothing to really think about. Just the cold deck. What's the six, seven, eight, jack nine, king jacks, brick? So back to where we started. Yeah, and what a run out for Tom. It's Rivering the stone nizzles. Yeah, and that turn check call from Jeremy Osmond is actually a good example of stack off thresholds at different SPRs yeah. as well. Take note, boys and girls. 
think it's very easy, especially for beginners, to fall into the trap of approaching PLO with a kind of no limit holdem mindset, if you will. So there's plenty of uh, free information out there online, different charts and stack off thresholds that you know SPRs from 0.5 all the way up to 10. I mean that was a excellent way to put it. I, I, I brilliant phrasing and totally agree. I mean, you look at kind of not even top, right? Because there was a queen out there. So tens mm. up, so sub, yeah. not bottom two, but just like a middling two pair yeah. and a, and no straight draw, weak flush draw. You know, I think the SPR was too much to, to check raise and get it in because when you check raise that, you're, you're not folding Definitely. really. So, but yes, yeah, brilliant, brilliant way to put that. Yeah, and I think, I think that's why the hand as well falls into the check call bucket rather than like probing turn for two thirds or even pot where how is your hand performing against Tom coming over the top on the turn like sure your two pair could be good but Tom's always going to have a hand with a ton of equity right yeah we're just not performing that well well against and it's really difficult for us to improve yeah, and it, but it, it's just good enough that folding seems maybe wrong as well, making it a very clean check call. Yeah. You know, also potentially picking up delayed, some some delayed bluffs that are doing very poorly against you, maybe. I think Tom probably calls a bet with his particular holding, but yeah. It, I wonder if this 10 is a 9, whether Duan just folds here. Somewhat wrapped around the ace with the king, queen, ten, a bottom pair. Just going to pick up, you know, decent amount of equity on a lot of turns. Yeah, so I was thinking about the last part. This this go check bet call. Oh uh, yeah, so open call, uh, check, bet for small. B thirty three, I believe. 150 into 510. I kind of feel like Tom should let this go on the flop. If I, I, I don't really like his check. Maybe if there was a backdoor heart draw, yeah. but, with, but with it rainbow and not with hearts, I just think bottom pair. I mean, yes, the 10 queen and king are all clean, and I'm sure that's what Tom is thinking. But, but I think it's, you know, and the jack is a pretty good card for him. So, I mean, it, it makes some sense, but... Uh, uh, maybe it's enough for his MDF, actually, with all those being clean outs, the 10 through king, right? Interesting. Man, Osmus fires a big B33, bullet. so he's getting 4 to 1, right? Yeah, I think it was actually yeah. B25. Okay, so yeah, one, so one, I guess that makes sense. 115 to 560. So yes. L like Osmus barrel there, he has a great hand to do it with. That was, that was some good poker. He's got... Got an eight. Fold out some better gutters. hands. Yeah, fold out better hands for sure. Got a heads up match on our hands, boys and girls. Let us know in the chat who you're rooting for at home. Tom Dwan. How much is it? Two been blessing our screens for what feels like the better part of almost two decades now. I remember speaking to Galfond about when um, they first started filming high stakes poker the first season. And it was actually Dwan that, that helped a lot of the guys get seats at the table. The likes of Galfond, who then ultimately didn't get many invites back. But Dwan, however, just seemed to always know the style that he needed to approach the games. 
fast forward for 15 years. I think it's safe to say he probably has an open seat to almost any game in the world, right? Yeah. Spicy turn card for Osmus. It feels like another one of those boards, though, on a two-turn board where you'd rather just check call than probe, especially at this SPR. SPR 5. I mean, I... I don't think he's... It does depend on Dwan's sizing. I mean, if Dwan pots here, Osmus probably lets it go. And Dwan's trying to get his weak two pair to showdown. Yeah. I, Osmus' hand may be too good to bluff, but don't think he expects to win very often pretty dicey spot i think if his hand is good he gets bluffed some and uh his hand probably isn't good very often nine i don't know nine, no good ten, ten nine. Oh, i didn't hear what you said sorry. tom with an interesting decision sorry. to I check back flop oh, no and way. turn Well, the, the chat is supposedly rooting for a commentator's heads-up showdown, me against you. Oh, yeah? High-stakes PLO. Boys and girls, I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. one. Uh, Great. not well. How many I big blinds would you be laying I did man? before, but it, like... <laughs> That's become a, a thing nowadays, way. right? To get <laughs> to get soft action. Yeah. That's kind of cool. It's just like... Oh, no, no. It's like ma just magnetized there. Yeah. You move it around. Oh. It's kind of oh, nice. Oh, I mean, yeah, maybe yeah, not yeah. for playing poker, but... I mean, if if it was like four-handed, you're not on the hand, maybe. Right. You know, sure. Heads up, it seems a little. Um, it's forty, right? The boys continuing to do our jobs for yeah. us. Just plug in the old secret lab chairs there. With the adjustable magnetized headrest. There we go. I'm just gonna adjust mine down a little bit and. Don't fall asleep back. on us now. I have no idea. What is your PLO experience, Mr. <laughs> Kilbane? Well, it's, it's, it's the only game I play. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe I shouldn't lay you big blinds then. Ah, Russ, come on, man. You behave. I'm not. I'm not one of these young, younger generation players that thinks that you know I can just start suddenly challenging the old guard that have heaps more life experience and felt experience. Which, in my opinion, I, right. in the high stakes arena, especially heads up, is worth a lot more than. How many hours you spent in Solver Jail? Mindset, mentality, and the way you approach the game. I mean, a once upon a time, game. PLO was my best game. Yeah. But it was a long time ago. And um, uh, yeah, there was a period of time when PLO Cash was the main thing I played, but this, we're talking like 12 years ago, maybe, for a couple years, especially during the series. There were some games in Bobby's room with Sammy Farha, like 200, 400 PLO deep stack, but. But then between getting into No Limit Hold'em tournaments and mixed games, it's actually been kind of the game I've played the least relative to how much I used to play it, you know? And really in the last years, I only play PLO mostly as part of, you know, 8, 10, 12 game mixes for many years now. And oftentimes it's capped and whatever. So PLO once upon a time but no longer, not even close to my best game anymore, in my opinion. Yeah, heads up PLO, I mean. And also heads up, I like never played, so. Different beast. Yeah, I only played ring, so even shorthanded, but heads up. I've played up to like 2K heads up PLO online. Yeah. Um, I'd say less than less than 50k hands lifetime. And two of my biggest losses ever, or actually my biggest loss ever, came in the form of heads up PLO. It's a very wealthy French businessman. I'm not going to name, but he sent me <coughs> back to the drawing board. At King's Resort just last summer. We're coloring up here. 
going to the chip stack, we see Tom, 80 bigs to Jeremy's 22. So, almost four to one chip advantage now. This been playing small pots and taking some conservative lines. Um, Jeremy with that nice double barrel bluff, but but you, I feel like you see this quite a bit uh, at the end of tournaments in general. But PLO, it's fu it's interesting. A lot of a lot of times guys don't three bet or re raise out of position as much as maybe in like a cash heads up PLO situation. Have you have you noticed that? I feel like I noticed that quite a bit. The, what, like limping more of sub 30? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think it makes a ton of sense given like how many hands. Uh, yeah, just given like how close yeah. the equities run, right? You just want to be limping I'm probably a lot like more. What happened, on the, the what happened in that hand? Uh... Jack ten deuce, check check. Turn nine. four, oh. check check. River five. I hit a straight. Oh, I bet he folded, which is also kind of oh, crazy. He folded. Yeah, I'm probably bluffing the river a ton. Like, and, I think and he's he, probably he blocks the ace. A lot of the ace three. Wow. Well. Yeah, he had a six too. Uh, sorry. I mean, I would bet two pair. Oh, he had a six also. Yeah, I would bet two pair, yeah. but still, like. How much did you bet? Did you bet like a lot? Forty percent. Forty percent. Wow. I mean, maybe he made the right read, but I don't know. It feels like it was just a little snark. Yeah. It's, everyone has a different approach to, you know what I'm saying? Like, you never know how someone's going to react whenever three people have three big blinds or whatever. It's like, it's really weird stuff. Yeah. They're talking about the hand where Patrick had the double suited aces. Yeah. Yeah. And that was still eight handed right at the time, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> I mean, if you're not. Spiting, spite potting that. <laughs> I wouldn't imagine, I wouldn't think he would do that. Yeah, for sure. Definitely not. Don't know if you're allowed to. <clears throat> but yeah, Osmus with a very good observation there. Uh, wise observation that you never know how people are gonna, different people are gonna react in these spots where it's like three guys have, you know, six big blinds and you're on the bubble and like he was even saying himself, I guess they're a little surprised that Patrick didn't three bet the double suited aces in position. So. I don't know about you, all the boys and girls at home, but Tom Axel Bedell. Now one of my one of my favorites to watch. I'm sure we'll be seeing more of him at future stops. Yeah, if you're not spiting that hand, I should be raising 100. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> which sure. I wasn't doing because like I don't want people going too crazy. You know, I think you need to spite a little in those spots. Like, yeah, yeah, I think so. It, I I honestly was really surprised how tight everyone played. I thought the I thought I mean Me everyone's too. gone now, but. I thought people would just be blasting it in right away. And everyone was folding like a ton. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I was shocked when to, there see, were people making, to see Paul and Elton like folding all the time. There were people just, making folds where like they could have potted and probably been ahead of my range and had a little fold. Like that spot, I'm probably folding, I don't know, 15%, 20%. Like, right, right. It's a yeah. pretty big deal for him if he picks up those chips. He's on my left, I got a snug yeah. up. Like, what is it? 5,100? Yeah, I, I was going to be careful because I just assumed everyone would bust really fast and then they they were playing so tight like they were full. Well your position's different. Too. Yeah yeah you my position. You on my left. I don't snug up a ton you know but Patrick's on my direct left like if he has 500 exactly, in the yeah. Both expressing yeah, gonna... how surprised they were how snug the FT played out. Also cool to hear them give what I, I believe to be very honest discussion about the yeah. strategic bubble play. Yeah, Osman was in a very, Osman's clearly in a handcuff spot. Uh, you know, I don't think people were quite as tight 
as they're saying. I mean, definitely right off the bat, Paul Foua played some hands that he could have passed for sure. I mean, Bedell played kind of tight, but st still played some hands. I mean, even the hand Jeff Gross went out on, I think, is pretty close. Yeah. You know? I mean, only single suit with the four dangler. It's triple suited as well. Yeah. So, um, I mean, the only person who clearly played super tight was uh, Lavrik, who actually did fold aces. Um, yeah, Elton got involved in a few spots. I feel like there there are a couple of like limp spots where it could have just gone in, and like Tom mentioned as well, there are a couple of hands where people could have just potted, and they still had that fifteen to twenty five percent you know fold equity. So what's going on here? There's one point two in the middle, Dwan. If you are ever gonna find a fold with top pair, yeah, this is probably the spot. Oh, definitely. With very ragged cards. You you do have a backdoor flush job, but you're super blocking it. And uh, versus a large bet size by Tom. Um, but it is still top pair. I mean, Osmus is probably weighing all the options, really. Like, do I call? What cards, if I call, am I kind of just jamming term with? Um, what am I doing on the turn if I do that? What if I just raise here? What if Tom's just bet folding? But the one argument against Tom kind of bet folding is Tom hasn't yeah, been like hyper aggressive I, yet. I made was I just completed the small blind. Elton limped early and then you over limped in the next spot. And I just called like ace, king, king, six or something with the suited to the king. Depends a lot on stacks, I think. Yeah, and I'm just gonna pot it. Like if Elton repots, that's great, but you're just gonna flat. A ton yeah, I'm flat. And we're like 50 stuff. bigs deep. And oh everyone, yeah. You're everyone else has like four top. bigs. Yeah, yeah. It's like, didn't seem like a like I should be raising. Like you're not even making that many chips by raising. I mean, you're obviously making chips. But yeah, it's yeah, not. yeah. Sure, a cash game. It's, I'm saying you definitely cash, raise. You're not even making that many chips in the yeah. tourney. You're making even less chips because you got to fold a ton of flops. Yeah, like, yeah. But that felt kind of nitty, but I, th I think it's right, probably, but. Yeah, this was the hand when he didn't raise the kings out of the small blind that they were just talking about. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I liked his play when he did it. I liked his decision not to raise. I think a lot of people would have raised his hand, but agree with Jeremy. That was like and hand number one, right? Yeah, their breakdown was qu quite good because it's not a spot where he's really winning a ton of chips and terms of chip EV and it's pretty brutal tournament spot with Tom having already come in the pot so here we go this seems like a hand Tom might start betting the flop with the double four straight blocker plus the top pair double backdoor flush draw the one counter argument would be getting check raised still pretty I mean, do you fold? Do you not fold? Double backdoor flush draw plus the straight blocker. But I'd, I'd like going ahead and, and being aggressive with it. Osmus, not the most comfortable spot. And decides just to call, which I like. Again, same idea that you were saying with the SPR maybe being too big there for two pair. Yeah, it's an annoying one as well because it's very difficult to get bottom two to show down. Not going to improve on, you know, what, 90% of turn cards. And even when you do pick up hearts, you're drawing to non-nutted hearts as well. I mean, the good news is this king and the jack are clean. So, yeah, 5-3 king, jack, and maybe a couple hearts that don't make straights. But, yeah, most, maybe not, maybe more like... You improve on like 20, 25% of turns or something. And uh, it's the Dur show, folks. Yeah, the one finds it. 7 8 does complete. Does Osmus ever turn bottom two into a bluff hit? Feels. I don't think so. Yeah. That's, that's too good of a hand. I mean, if anything, like, think about blocking. But 
I love the Dwan look away. Uh, you know. The old look away with his marginal holdings. Tables it. It's interesting. Do you ever value bet that hand as Tom? Nines up. <clears throat> it's. I mean, you've got two blockers to the four deuce and four seven straight, which your opponent probably doesn't have. If given the way that yeah, played, if if I guess if Osma has a straight, he has like seven eight, and he would check raise probably. The like, oh, if you win a pot, like let's say Patrick pots out and I fold. That's like a lot of chips, kind of. Yeah, and I need to tighten up a bunch because now all of a sudden he has yeah. like two mil. He can flat some hands. He can, you know. And just seeing that people will do something whenever no one does anything ever, you just keep. I mean that I didn't. Hand. I just assume people don't have great hands. Or yeah. Whatever, but I'm more like. So I guess Tom agrees with me that Patrick should have three bet the double suited aces. Yeah, he just has so much fold equity, right? Or just also Tom was talking about how the situation where he wins that pot. And actually, if he got a full double, he, he would have more like three million because he had 1.5. And now he's in a situation where he's pretty close to Tom and in position. It's a super good spot for him in the tournament. Oh, so I... I I kind of agree. It's it's actually worth it, and your hand is just like, I mean, super top of range. So they're saying spite three bet ish, but I don't know. It might just be good. It's also the downside to there being, you know, of a course. massive crypto downswing before we come to Madrid. <laughs> you don't see people take the spots as as often as they would if you know Bitcoin's just comfortably cruising along, cruising along at sixty five k. Luna to God knows how much. Uh, fractions of a cent. Last I checked, it's yeah. still. Yeah, man, Luna. That was that was n some craziness was right there. Big old rock, eh? Algorithmic stable coins, quote unquote stable. Wow. Not seen anything quite like it, Brian. Exciting crypto, exciting new products that have never been tested. And guess what? Sooner or later, the market will test it out. And uh, if you have something that doesn't work, it gets exploited. So a little bit of the Wild West and uh, caveat emptor, as they say. But, and I, I say this as a crypto, well, I'm a Bitcoin bull. Let's put it that way. I, I don't like, in terms of investing, I think crypto will do some cool things. But I think from an investment standpoint, um, I'm pro Bitcoin. And I'm very conservative with the rest of it. But um, Even Ethereum? I, that's the one thing other than Bitcoin I have exposure to. Yeah, nice. F. Yeah, same but, as me then. Yeah, I mean, I so Bitcoin and ETH, and uh, and the rest of it. All I'm happy to see how it works out, but uh, I feel what what I think ends up happening is people have this approach like I'm too late to really like turn right. my hundred dollars into a million. No, yeah. you are too late to do that with Bitcoin. You're not oh, going to buy a hundred dollars yeah, yeah. of Bitcoin and make a million dollars. Yeah, but people are they're not really investing. They're they're more just like playing the crypto casino. And so, you know, from an investment standpoint, I just think the Bitcoin or maybe the Ethereum argument is like the best because it's already a space that's so speculative with big upside returns even from today. So, like, why not take the safest options? But, you know, most people don't want to hear that. Most people want to get rich quick. So well, definitely. But um, if we really want to get into, you know, rates that banks are paying and, you know, potential upsides to Bitcoin compared to leaving your fiat stuck in a bank for the next 10 years. Anyway, let's look at this pot because Osmus is now, I mean, he's kind of going for it here. Um, I think, I mean, the three bl is blocking the three, four, but there's also four, eight and eight, nine. So it's the least relevant straight blocker. Um, he does have the queen of diamonds. So I imagine he's going to bluff if diamonds get there, but that won't work out for him because Dom Dwan has diamonds, but if he just double barrels and bluffs blanks, it should work. It's hard for Tom to call. So, see if 
I mean, Osman's never winning this at showdown with the pair of deuces. And that was as blank as it comes. Didn't interact with the board at all. Didn't change the nuts. What kind of sizing would you go here with like two pair and a straight blocker or a straight? 300. Goes half so pot. he's going, no, he's going third pot. Half pot. Six oh, it already, pot. wow. Yeah. They're fast with the they're graphics. Quick. Yeah. Okay, a half pot. I mean, this is probably going to work. This is a tough call. I mean, Tom could. I think it's more likely he raises than calls with the pocket fours, and he might. And that will that will work. <laughs> I don't see Osmus. Uh, threes aren't a good blocker to bluff re-raise. Oh, I mean, there isn't even room for that. I mean, Osmus only has 900k behind. Yeah, unless Duong clicks it to 600 and then, you know. Yeah, but that would, I mean... <laughs> Oh wow, Tom's going for it. He has a really good hand to to bluff with. So he's blocking four eight and four three, and he can't call. That fifty euros is a fun river there. That that was that was probably the most interesting part of the heads up so far. The boys were both playing the pokers. Do you have it? No. <laughs> <laughs> and threes. I have fours. With, I could pop the turn. I flush draw six four four. I love that. Did you have it? Cheeky little grin from Dwan. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've been brutally honest with each other. I feel like in some of these recent streams, I've seen a lot of people lying, and these guys just very openly discussing some strategy from earlier and giving yeah. their views, which seemed completely forthright and honest to me. And here we go, discussing the hand. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Very, They're very laxed, both of them. I mean, they're both veterans of the game, right, Brian? It, yeah. There's no point in trying to hide it. They both know what's up. They've been around long enough. Hot. Yeah, also within the context of Triton, oh. this is about as small of a heads up as differences right. with an in guys terms of be playing for. Yeah. I mean, so was it 91k two. difference? Yeah. Yeah. Chump change, eh? I mean, mm. eh. I yeah. Eh. I mean, clearly it's not chump change, but yeah, just at Triton, I think this is. A 91k heads up match. Yeah. It's, it's I used to play a little like 10 big blind heads up VLO actually. You used to? You no, no ante though, right? Yeah. No, sometimes with an ante. Oh, really? But small. Like not as big as this, but still maybe like quarter of a big blind in there or something. Okay. Maybe half, I don't know. I don't yeah, I'm surprised right. they don't chop it's, it in half, I'm by glad the way. they add the any to the PL Oh, tournament. yeah, it's way better. They did in the, like, the series, too, and Aria. They did in Aria? They, they did. The last two years, they've added it everywhere now. So it's, it's way better. Kind of cool, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Man, the bubble's so nitty in PLO with no ant, big blind any. It's, like, insane. Dude, I once did a 17-hour solo stint in the commentary booth for the 2K high roller at Kings because there was no ante. Came back into day seven three with 17 middle, left. Seven in the middle, seven in my Took stack. Took us 17 hours to crown a winner. <clears throat> wow. On my own in the commentary booth. <laughs> Just brutal. be in Twitch chat. That's brutal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's so good for PLO that they add that. It gives some incentive to try to win when there's ICM pressure. And here we go. Both guys have... I mean, this is just going in, right? I mean, Tom with a monster. Over pair, top and bottom, big flush draw. But Osmus, I mean, one-to-one -one SBR, and he's just Pop buried huge. here. Did you? I have bottom pair and a flush draw. Absolutely buried. I mean, yeah, it's pretty hard to have 4%. Oh, wow. 
I'm like really dead. And you have a three? <clears throat> I mean, what do I need? Running straight? Running full house? So Tom Dwan, Brian, 96% to win his no. first Triton you trophy. You start now. What's up? You don't want to start now, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy very quickly becoming one of my favorite people in the industry. Yeah, that's some good gallows humor right there. Yeah, really like nice that. guy. And well, and dead on yeah. the turn. <clears throat> cool. Good game, man. Yeah. Good playing with you. I, uh, I haven't enjoyed a heads up match like that in, in a very long time. They're just two legends of the game getting it done. Tom Dwan. His first Triton title. First Triton title, yeah. I bet PLO. if you'd ask him if he thinks it's going to come in the form of a PLO event, he'd, he'd be like, no, probably short deck. Yeah. I mean, especially because there's like maybe one PLO tournament at, at a Triton stop <laughs> as well. Yeah. Makes it a little tougher. Not so many PLO Triton title holders. Tom joins those small ranks here. 290K score. For Tom, Jerry, o Jeremy Osmus, nearly 200,000 in second. Uh, that was actually kind of the longest. I mean, the whole final table there from six on down went super fast. Little play right there on the bubble and then a long heads up match. But not too long, but long enough. Long enough to get some fun stuff in there. Tom Dwan going to chat. Here with an with elated Tom, Tom Dwan, his seventh cash and first. Triton title, 290,000 euros in the 25K pot limit Omaha. Tom, you were like a hot knife through butter here at this final table. Out of your seven opponents, you knocked out five of them. How really? much of this was run good? How much of this was just you beasting? Uh, most of it was run good, but probably some people were playing a little too tight uh, from like 12 or so left, so I got like a bit of free chips. Um, you sounded surprised when I told you that you knocked out five players. You really didn't think you did that? I don't know. I knew I knocked out a few, but I didn't know it was five. Well, listen, you've been around the Triton brand a long time, have some deep relationships with a lot of the staff here. I ask everybody the same question. What is it in particular about this brand and this family and this team that keeps you coming back and that you have such an affinity for? I think it's a warmer vibe, like warmer atmosphere. It's it's pretty chill it just feels pretty chill um you know it would have been nice to feel chill and then like win 100k but I'll, I'll take it as a start hopefully i'll win the uh one later today that'd be a, that'd be a nice one you've accomplished so much throughout the course of your poker career obviously everyone remembers when you first came on the scene and took the world by storm over betting and doing things that folks hadn't even thought about what's left for you to accomplish do you have goals in poker still or are your goals outside the borders of the game I've never really had goals in poker, at least from like real early. Probably, probably when I like first was able to beat the higher stakes online, that was a goal. But after that, I don't think I really had goals. But you are involved in some other enterprises. I know the other day you and I were talking a little bit about crypto, a little bit about the plans for the Triton brand, stuff that you've been consulting on. How much can you share with us? The crypto stuff, I can say. Um, um, you know, I, I like that kind of stuff. Like, uh, I think poker to me feels a bit zero sum. And so if I'm gonna be at the table, I wanna play good, also try to be like decent fun, you know, uh, maybe not if it's like all pros at the table, but if there's like recreational players there. But uh, generally it doesn't excite me quite as much, especially now where like a lot of people got better. So you don't have as much room to mess around usually. Um, but you can't tell me that a moment like this doesn't still have some measure of validation for you as many a, a, of these events as you've played. No, it was cool and honestly like it was fun to play because I had a big stack and with this kind of structure you get to get away with a lot. And if anything, I think a few of the people were leaning a little bit too tight even. So I got to get away with even a bit more. Like that's the fun kind of poker, you know. Um, 
so it was cool. And then every time I got caught, I just got there. So that was fun. Well, I know more than a few people in the room were thrilled to see you pick up your first title as others have done before you, including Paul Pua here at this stop. Still a little bit of poker left to play in Madrid. We wish you luck moving forward. Congrats. Yeah, maybe Paul and I can get heads up and see uh, which one of us can take home too. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Back to you guys. History being made yet again here at the Gran Via in Madrid. Tom Dwan with his first Triton trophy in the 25K PLO. And he mentioned there, kind of giving us a little tease, that he wouldn't mind getting heads up with uh, Paul Poor in the upcoming short deck main. How are your thoughts on uh, on that one? I mean, he, he obviously has a lot more experience in, in short deck than he would PLO, if I had to assume. Yeah, I mean, this is... You know, I, I don't know which one will actually be bigger, the 100K or the 150K, bigger buy-in, but one's the main event. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that prize pool is going to be huge. I know Tom uh, seems like the game he's playing the most recently has been short deck. Yeah. Last night, he was playing short deck cash after the players' party, you know, up up on the sixth floor. So, um, yeah, I mean, that would be cool. And then one of them would be would join Adamo as a double Triton title winner on this Madrid stop. So, and uh, those guys have a lot of experience to go way back. That would be a fun heads up match. And uh, yeah, it'd always be nice to just get heads up in your next tournament. Cause whether, whether you win or come in second, I mean, that's a big payday. Definitely. So we definitely win even more money with that than winning the 25 K PLO for sure. Well, talking of paydays, this 290,000 euros is just about got to cover the next three buy-ins for Tom. He has the 100K short deck main event coming up, event number 12, followed by 150K short deck, one bullet only on the 24th. And then if that wasn't enough for everyone here, there's a cheeky little 30K short deck turbo uh, on May 25th, just in case, you know, the two big ones don't go your way. So when I was up there uh, and, and Tom was on my left, actually, I sat, I ordered some food, Kind of sat at the table, was watching the action. Uh, Wykin, uh Young was on my right, and I he said that in that 30k they're playing at pot limit pre-flop, which okay. I think they're trying out for the first time. So he said that. Don't know whether or not that's true, but that could be fun because you know you know that stretch of the short deck tournament when the stacks mm. get short and you just get jam 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 jam. Well, maybe that one will be a little different. So um, well, that could be revolutionary. Yeah, you know. Do you think that's Triton just taking feedback that we've seen online, you know, on Twitter? There's already been feedback about some of the broadcast events when it comes to short deck. So the fact that they're kind of taking that initiative to trial some pot limit pre-flop short deck, I'd like yeah, to Yeah, I don't it. even know if it's just feedback from the chats. Or players. I mean, it might even be the players. I would guess a lot of the guys, uh, especially like the cash short deck players, mm. maybe a little annoyed at that stretch of the tournament where it just seems like Maybe it's like these guys that don't yeah. even know how to play. They just have some pre-flop chart and just go all in all yeah. the time. Like, no, nah, let's change it so you can only raise the pot. And, uh, you know, it, it'll it'll change that part of the tournament up quite a bit. Like, you know, imagine just, just what we were seeing with PLO. Mm. And Tom could raise all these hands and know, like, you know, Patrick couldn't just go all in with exactly. the double suited aces behind him. Yeah. And so he ended up flatting. And then, you know, maybe the same thing with, with Lovrick, maybe, maybe not. So he ends up folding. Right now in short deck, you're going to get situations like that too. And you're just forced to play post flop more. So I don't know. It's something to try out. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. I mean, we'll see when it happens. But uh, it's it's cool that Triton is trying new things. For like sure. even yesterday, I was talking with Paul and it was like, hey, what about playing a, a mix event where it's no limit short deck 
and this was like we were all talking about me, Tom, and Paul. All three of all three of the games, but all the games were played with the short deck anti structure. <laughs> so the no limit and PLO played with the short deck anti structure along with short deck. I'd I'd be in for that. Let's try it out. You mixed game specialists say, so, boys and girls, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in around about twenty minutes time for the second main event of the Triton series here in Madrid. It is the hundred K short deck main. See you guys in twenty.